when things will improve. It's been musical chairs at quarterback for the Tar Heels. Jonathan Hall has the most experience. Highly touted Chucky Burnett has struggled and stumbled in his freshman campaign. Enter Todd Burnett, who Mac Brown had hoped to redshirt. He, too, has gone down to injury, and he's out of the season finale today. Offensively, Carolina's youth has shown all season long. While nothing has gone right for the Tar Heels, it seems the opposite's been true for Steve Spurrier at Duke. Senior Roger Boone was on an offensive tear early in the year. But against the Clemson Tigers in the game that turned around the Blue Devils' season, a sophomore dynamo named Cuthbert came to the rescue in a Duke upset. When league-leading passer Billy Ray went down to injury, another sophomore stepped to the stage. David Brown has been nothing short of sensational. Sensational can't begin to describe Clarkston Hines, ready to cap another All-American season. The Duke Blue Devils set to go bowling for the first time since 1961. JP Sports presents the best in regional college football, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Today's game is brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. By Coors, Brewery Fresh, Pure and Natural. It's a true American original. By Buick and your Buick dealer. The great American road belongs to Buick. By the airline of ACC country, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. By Gillette, the makers of Gillette Atra Plus Shaving System and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream. Together, the best a man can get. By Interstate Johnson Lane, the leading southeastern investment firm. And by Isuzu, the first car builders of Japan. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Jack Corrigan, and welcome to our season finale here in Chapel Hill at Keenan Stadium. It's been a tough year, really, at Keenan Stadium, Jack, for the Tar Heels. They won their season opener, and since that time, it's been two months waiting for another win. For Duke, just the opposite side of the coin for them. They're one of the hottest teams in college football. When the Blue Devils were 1-3, and three, it would be hard to think that they'd have to worry about being overconfident in their final game of the season, but that's the case, and a principal reason why, Randy Cuthbert, the outstanding sophomore tailback, you see his numbers, nearly 240 yards a game in total offense. He has been the final ingredient for that air ball attack, giving them the running game, the power running game, yet still have the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. He has been sensational. While Carolina's young offense has really struggled, their defense is pretty decent. And that's the thing that Mac Brown is going to try and build on. He has got young people on the defensive side. They are led by their sophomore linebacker, Dwight Hollier, number two tackler in the ACC, averaging nearly 15 tackles a ball game. They are a young defense. They say defenses ultimately win you championships. With that in mind, Max, hoping that uh, maybe they'll even spring an upset today. And the number one pass defense belongs to North Carolina. They go against, of course, the number one pass offense in the ACC. As we mentioned, Duke is headed for a bowl game for the holidays. With more on that and this longtime rivalry between the Blue Devils and the Tar Heels, let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Mike? That's right, but first, uh, I've got to tell you guys, I feel a bit underdressed down here on the sidelines. Both of you get an A-plus for fashion today. Yes, uh, Duke Blue Devils will either go to the All-American Bowl in Birmingham or the Citrus Bowl in Orlando. This is a storied rivalry, as you said. It began back in 1888. Over 100 years, these two schools, only 10 miles apart, have been playing each other. And today, it's literally going to be brother against brother. I've been down here on the sidelines with both teams warming up. A tremendous amount of emotion today. Carolina beside me chomping at the bit to run out onto the field. It's going to be some game. I, I think it's going to be pretty close. All right, Mike, get out of the way. There come the Tar Heels, one and nine, and as you can see, still looking for a win in the conference. But their fans, Jack, have hung in with them all season long. They've been remarkable in their support of Mac Brown and his Tar Heels. They have been sellout crowds here each home game this season. Mac and company hoping that perhaps they can give them a season-ending present with a colossal upset this afternoon. And, of course, there have been a number ball games for North Carolina this year. We'll be talking about that as the game goes along for Steve Spurrier, who is the hottest item in college or pro football as far as the coaching names out there. His team has won six in a row, and they have a possible ACC title waiting for them if they can get by the upset-minded Tar Heels here at Keenan Stadium today. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. 
That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. We believe there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. Until recently, my job was a nice job. I made sure everyone in our company understood our insurance benefits package, especially me. But then they started to make all these new rules and regulations. Do you know what Cobra is? Let me tell you, it's not a reptile. And Section 89? No. I still haven't found anyone to explain that one. Oh, and then there's this thing called Tefra. It's funny. I used to think that was a shampoo. <laughs> Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Eight-six, hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love Thanks. to fly, and it shows. Canaan Stadium, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It's a gorgeous late November day, and it would be even prettier for the Tar Heels if they could pull the upset over Steve Spurrier's Duke Blue Devils. Seven and three, five and one in the conference. That's the most conference wins for a Duke team since 1970. And as we said, Steve Spurrier's name has been mentioned just about anywhere. They're looking for a coach, and Duke, of course, would love to keep him. It is beautiful out, as we mentioned. A little bit cool, 54 degrees, sunny skies, just a light wind. And the Duke Blue Devils, the visiting Blue Devils, have won the toss, and they will receive. Duke ranked number 25 in the country this week, and on a six-game winning streak. Last time they've won six in a row goes all the way back to 1952. So you can tell the impact Duke has had on the Atlantic Coast Conference as far as the string of wins they put together. Clint Waltney will tee it up. Randy Jones back deep for the Duke Blue Devils. And we're just about set to start a long-time rivalry. Tar Heels and the Blue Devils, and we're underway. Quentin McCracken chases this one down, a yard deep, hesitates, and brings it out. To about the 19-yard line, that's it. And that's where David Brown will come out at quarterback, and he has been superb the last couple of weeks with four touchdown passes in each game as we check our AC Delco starting lineups. Joining Dave Brown, Randy Cuthbert, he's been something else. Chris Brown, the fullback, Clements, and the All-American Clarkston Hines, the wide receivers. Across the front, one of the best offensive fronts in the ACC. Port, maybe on his way to an All-American year. Kerry Metz, maybe an ACC, All-ACC performer. And Kalana, the tight ends, as good as they come. Duke starts at its own 20, and they will put it up. And a screen pass set up to Brown on the left side. Brown's got an opening, and he's got close to 10 yards before North Carolina's defense can run him down. By Defensively Green. for the North Carolina Tar Heels, a good front wall with Ricky Shaw, Alex Samakis, and Cecil Gray as Duke will be set to go without a huddle and a second down and short yardage situation. So we'll reset Carolina defense in a moment. Second and short, Cuthbert's got the first down. Goes off the right side for about four. The linebackers Tackle by Bernard. are showing us the uh, Duke defensive set. We want to look at the Carolina defensive set. Uh, we'll get the Duke defense in a moment here. You can see the good people that Duke has defensively, particularly in the secondary over the last couple of weeks. We'll try and set that Carolina defense for you when we get that graphic up. At the 34-yard line, Duke with their initial first down of the ball game. Dave Brown over the middle. And again, it's Chris Brown, the fullback. And he fights his way out for eight or nine yards again. Second down and short. Timmons made the stop. You can see early on here, Steve Spurrier electing to go conservative 
trying to take advantage of the emotion of the Carolina defense to just pick away underneath at them and also call the plays from the line of scrimmage. They have not gone back into a huddle on this offensive set. Brown got nine on that pass reception. Second down, a yard to go at the 38-yard line. David Brown may have checked off there at the line. On second and short, he'll put it up, and he wants it all. Going deep, far sideline, just over the outstretched arms of Darrell Clements. And Torin Dorn was stride for stride with Darrell Clements. Carolina defensively, their veteran people are up front, particularly Cecil Gray, who's had another good year. Samakis has played well at nose guard. The linebackers, Timmons and Collier, the youngsters inside, and Eric Ash has played well at outside linebacker. A young secondary with nine interceptions on the year. Third down and a yard to go for Duke. And it's Cuthbert. Just barely got it off the right side. Flags are down late in the play. We might have a face mask as Cuthbert was struggling for yardage. Cookie Massey got over there to make the stop. And we await the penalty. It is a face mask against the North Carolina defense. Carolina defense was trying to string out Randy Cuthbert. They did a good job of it, but Cuthbert, as we have seen in previous telecasts, is the kind of running back that one guy is not going to bring down in the open field too often. Five-yard penalty. Face mask defense. First down. Inadvertent face mask. We'll see it at the end of this play. They see him stringing the play out. Willie Joe Walker, the outside linebacker, is the guy, the guilty party, with the grab on the face gear. And Duke, a first down in North Carolina territory. Play action for Brown. Loads and goes over the middle. Who else? Hines down inside the 35 to the 34. A little shoving match as Clarkston Hines picks up yet another reception, adding to his ACC record total. That's 182 on his career. He got 15 yards. Hines on a crossing route takes a tremendous hit from Cookie Massey, the strong safety, but he pops right back up, and then there's a little extra shove by Eric Gash here, and that's what Hines took exception to. Hines got the best of the deal. He got almost 16 yards and a first down. Just outside the Carolina 33-yard line. No score here, first quarter. Duke on their opening drive, and Randy Cuthbert. No gain on that play, or very little. Samakis and Gray are there. And Dwight Hollier from his linebacking core, and he'll be around the football all day, averaging over 14 tackles a ball game. Just phenomenal. High school All-American out of the Hampton, Virginia area. Well, that's an incredible total. 144 tackles coming into the ball game. Second down and nine as Cuthbert struggled for a yard. Play action, David Brown. Deep sideline for Clements. Pretty good hit by Torin Doran down there. And now Kalana levels Torin Doran. And that's going to be a penalty on Kalana. Kalana made a major mistake. Never start a fight on your opponent's sideline. Oh, I guess. You're in serious trouble. They finally get Kalana out of the crowd. And that tells you all you need to know about the emotional level of this Carolina football team. Mac Brown trying to play referee down there on the sideline. You don't want your team to play beyond the boundaries. But at the same time, when you are 1-9 and nine looking for an upset, you're trying to gain any edge you can. And Torin Dorn leveled Clements on the high pass. That Cookie, was a good hit. Cookie Massey pointing a finger. And then the melee followed when Kalana took a shot at Dorn along the sidelines. Kalana was in a whole sky of blue down there on the sideline. Here's a call. Dead ball foul, personal foul, defense, and ejection. First. I'm trying to figure out who they ejected. And it looked to us like Kalana was the gentleman. Well, we only saw the end of it. He might have been retaliating for his contact. Mac Brown wants an explanation. And Joe Long, our referee's mic went off, and uh, 
We didn't get a number on who was ejected. Mac Brown is all the way out on the field right now. Mac Brown is in his team's huddle. Try and get a look and see who was ejected from the ball game. Steve says, can I come out there too? <laughs> Trying to look for numbers down on the sidelines. They're out on the field, and now Steve Spurrier is out on the field. Now we've seen a little bit of everything, and we've only played about three minutes. So the coaches have tried to quiet the troops a bit. We're still not sure who was ejected, and we will get that information for you as soon as possible. Mike Hogwood maybe can figure it out better from the sideline for us. We'll check in as soon as possible. As it is, Duke with a first down at the Carolina 17-yard line. After what was an incomplete pass. Usually in those situations, the guy who retaliates is the guy who gets caught. But apparently, this time the officials saw it all the way, and Kalana was the respondent rather than the initiator. First down, Duke. Brown for Hines. Can't hold on. Cliff Baskerville broke it up. Brown kind of threw that one on a line to Clarkston Hines, Jack. Running the post flag route, and the ball was short. Well, that's not surprising, Brad. His two previous passes, the completion to Hines and the incompletion to Clements, were high. So he was trying to bring it down a little bit and brought it down too much. Second and ten. Brown's three out of six so far on this drive. Back to put it up again. End zone again. Hines. Touchdown. Thirty-six on his career. And for the time being, he'll hold on to first place in the NCAA record books. Came right back with the same play. Spurrier, Steve Spurrier saw the single coverage on Hines, said, well, we didn't get it the first time, let's try it again. This time, Clarkston ran a little bit longer on his post move to set up the, the corner route, and that gave him the space from Baskerville to get the pass. Gardner in for the point after. One more look, watch Clarkston Hines again. The key here is the inside look comes down they shake to the inside and then works back to the outside this time Brown put it in a much better spot where Baskerville had no chance to get to it and just a routine yeah, baby, go, go. diving touchdown catch for Clarkston Hines the All-American 11 53 to go first quarter Duke in front by a touchdown During Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale, generous factory cash is helping people save big bucks that they can take straight to the bank. Hi, I'd like to make a deposit. I love this bank. You never have to wait in line. Right now, you could save big bucks on the trooper during Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale. Intelligent advice. It can lead you into the market or into alternatives to the market. The leading Southeastern investment firm offers a full range of products and services, many specifically designed for the Southeastern investor. We urge you to take full advantage of our expertise before making your next investment, to seek intelligent advice before making your next move. Interstate, Johnson Lane. I like wheeling and dealing and a penthouse view. Dressing for success and knowing who's who. Bright lights, fast lane, my big time career. Meetings of the board and cold Coors beer. If you like your beer fresh, pure, and natural, head for the Rockies on the original taste of Coors. Tap an ice cold Coors with a friend of yours. Coors, the Rocky Mountain legend. 7-0 Duke here at Keenan Stadium with 11.53 to go first quarter. And already we have a ball player ejected from this one. David Brown has a touchdown pass to Clarkston Hines. These two teams are going to scrap all day, Jack. 
Well, there was all kinds of pushing and shoving going on. And at the end of the play, after the tackle by Dorn, Willie Joe Walk came over. Dorn Dorn gets knocked down by Dave Kalana. That's what caused the flag to be thrown. And that's why I don't understand why the penalty went against Carolina and the ejection apparently went against Carolina. Belton takes the kickoff. Found some room outside and got out near the 29-yard line. Randall Felton, a young freshman who's been a major part of a struggling North Carolina offense. And another freshman at quarterback, Chucky Burnett, as we check our AC Delco starting lineups, offensively joining Chucky for the heels today. Aaron Staples at the tailback spot. He's been playing fullback for the past couple of weeks. Benefield in there, Joey Yock and Felton, who we just talked about. And there's the offensive front. Pat Crowley, the best of that group. And Ethan Albright is the tight end. First and 10, Carolina. Got its own 30-yard line. Felton in motion. A misdirection. Staples blasts it off the right side. Got almost four yards. Doug Cly makes the stop. And Cly part of the front four, along with Allen, McDonald, and Tom Corpus for the Duke Blue Devils. The linebacking court, Dickerson with all that speed. Edwards and Howell is their leader. Smith, McCracken, Jackson, and Irwin Sampson. Pretty good secondary. They had five interceptions last week against Shane Montgomery. That's our AC Delco starting lineups. AC Delco automotive parts that don't just fit, they match. Second down, North Carolina. Six to go, and Burnett to the air. And he's got it complete. Out to the 44-yard line to Bucky Brooks. A real key this afternoon will be the ability of North Carolina's offense to control the football. In the eight losses this year, Carolina has seen its opposition have almost a quarter advantage in time. 11 minutes in the time of possession advantage to the opposition. Carolina can't allow that against Duke. Not going to do your defense much good either. First down, and it's Staples. Staples Maybe a half yard, and that's about it. Let's go down to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, I, I figured out what happened on that play, and not many people are wanting to talk. Willie Joe Walker has been ejected from the game for the Carolina Tar Heels. What they say was that Willie Joe instigated everything that happened, and Dave Kalana was retaliating, but it was Willie Joe who started it all, and Willie Joe Walker has been the only player that's been ejected from the game, but he's out for Carolina. All right. Thanks, Mike. Carolina is taking a timeout here, Brad. Again, this could be the kind of game where they can't allow themselves to fall into a hole early, so better to burn a timeout now. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back after these messages from our local ACC stations. Bigger. Better. Longer. Stronger. Higher tech. Higher engineering. Higher performance. More power. More headroom. More everything. The all-new 1990 Honda Accord is now available throughout the Carolinas, from the mountains to the beaches, at your Carolina Honda dealer. I just feel $80 is a lot to pay for sneakers. Oh, that's what tennis shoes cost these days. Yeah, Dad, you only got some that cost $100. Well, how can one record cost $15? <laughs> it's not a record, Dad. It's a CD. A what? Who wants dessert? Now there's something I can feel good about. I'll get this one, guys. It's feel good time at Western Steer. Feel good about 99 cents kids' meals now through December 31st. Our customers' communications can mean the difference between life and death. Who has the system they can really count on? Southern Bell can design a central office-based voice and data network that integrates the hospital's computers with doctors' offices. This lets them share everything from diagnostic tools to accounting information so they can keep cost in line and give patients the best possible service. There's the answer. Southern Bell's the one to turn to. North Carolina trailing by a touchdown. Second down and nine. They have it just outside their own 45-yard line. Chucky Burnett wants to throw a screen and oh! Almost had it kicked off. John McDonald had it in his hands. Lineman's dream. He just couldn't hold on to it. They were trying to set up the screen. There you see Willie Joe Walker on the Carolina bench. Unfortunately for the senior, the ejection means his 
college career has come to an end. Senior out of Brayton, Florida, and he'll spend the rest of the day on the sideline. Meanwhile, his offensive teammates have a third and nine. Both wide receivers to the top of your screen. Chucky Burnett looks that way, goes to the far sideline and overshot Felton, who had a half step on Irwin Sampson. Let's go back to Mike Hogwood on the sidelines. Mike? Guys, I mentioned in the pregame the high emotions that I felt during the pregame. They obviously have carried over into the game. This is a big game, an end of a frustrating season for Carolina. Right now, the coaches are walking up and down and telling every player, don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything stupid. They're saying that on both sides now. They want these guys to go out and play good, clean football the rest of the way. All right, McCallum. Alistair to punt, one of the better putters in the ACC. Almost 43 a kick, and he'll kick it away to Roger Boone. Nice punt. Boone takes it at the 8, goes down at the 7. Great coverage by North Carolina. Don Millen, a linebacker, got down there to make the hit. A 46-yard kick and a loss of a couple by Roger Boone. Scott McAllister has... Brad mentioned one of the best kickers in the ACC gets good hang time, and you see the Carolina kick coverage team headed up by Don Millen out of Atlanta. So Duke's offense with one touchdown already going back to work, this time at its own seven-yard line. David Brown, four touchdown passes in each of the last two games. He has one here in the first quarter. Randy Cuthbert maybe got two yards. Clarence Carter came up from his secondary spot. Carter, another converted tailback like Torrin Dorn. On obvious pass situations, they take Carter out of the ball game and bring Baskerville in, the freshman, the All-American, high school All-American out of Union, New Jersey, trying to put a little more speed on the corner. Second down and eight. Cuthbert got a couple. Brown to throw near his own goal line. Screen pass to Cuthbert. First down, out across the 20. Pickup of 12 for the man they call Cuddy, the sophomore Randy Cuthbert. Well, very obviously, after looking at film, the Duke offensive coaches felt that Carolina was very susceptible to the screen pass. That's the third time already that they have dumped the ball off in some kind of screen configuration to either Cuthbert or Chris Brown. We've done quite a few Duke ball games, Jack. I don't remember them going without a huddle the whole time. Brown loads and goes deep. And he overshot Walter Jones. Double coverage back there, and Brown shows his arm. The numbers the last two weeks for David Brown are almost phenomenal. He's five for nine in this ball game right now for 63 yards. You can see 65% completion rate for 818 yards and eight touchdowns the last two weeks. He's moved up in the pass efficiency charts in the ACC, and he's only played a few games. Put up some remarkable numbers. Second and ten. Brown again. Again to Chris Brown. The fullback's been wide open over the middle all day so far. Didn't get the first down, but picked up five or six. Howyer and Gash in on the stop. And again, Brown looks over to Steve Spurrier and just brings the troops right up to the line of scrimmage, where it'll be third down and three. Third and three. Both wide receivers in tight on the left side for David Brown. And he comes back to Kalana, the tight end. And Kalana gets out across the 40 to the 44 and then puts helmet to helmet on Clarence Carter. A pickup of 16, first down Duke. What a great pick play by the Duke offense. Kalana will come across the field and Walter... Jones and Clarkston Hines were right there going the opposite way. The traffic jam picked off the linebacker trying to guard Kalana, and they pick up the first down. Kalana's numbers coming into the day. And a big pass play out to the 44 to first down for the Blue Devils. A little quick draw to Cuthbert across midfield. Into the Carolina secondary all the way to the 38-yard line. Cookie Massey and Rondell Jones holding on for dear life on the big fella. We'll go back one play previously again. I want to talk about the pick play again. See Hines coming down, and he gets just caught up in there, 
Actually, they could have called offensive interference there because Clarkson was not really making any effort at all to look for the football there, but he picked off Eric Gash, got away with it. Kalana got the big yardage, and now Cuthbert on the draw has it in Carolina territory. Cuthbert with 29 yards on five carries. He's the tailback in the eye. Duke on a first down play action for Brown. Comes back to the left to Zuberer, his backup tight end. Tell you what, everybody gets involved in this Duke offense. They've got to love it if you're an offensive football player. Away from the ball, we have another flag as an altercation goes on between Cecil Gray and one of the offensive linemen of the Duke Blue Devils. Joe Long with the call coming up. We got a dead ball foul, personal foul, gets the offense. A dead ball foul, personal foul, gets the defense. Offset. Well, all that does, I guess, is get both teams and both coaches' attention one more time to the problem we've had here early in the ballgame. Doesn't have any effect on this drive. I think you maybe could have read lips and seen Steve Spurrier on one sideline say, no penalties, no penalties, he said to his team. And Mac Brown hoping his defense can just find a way to slow down what Spurrier's put together offensively. And nobody's been able to do that lately. Well, they have all the ingredients. They have the on-top speed to stretch the secondary. They've got sure-handed underneath receivers out of the tight end spot in the backfield. And they get excellent pass protection from a veteran offensive line. It's a quarterback screen. Zuberer got nine with the offsetting penalties. It remains second down and a yard to go. Cuthbert on the sweep, first down, cuts inside and down to the 19-yard line. Cuthbert got nine more. Carolina's best hope from a defensive point of view is to force turnovers, but that is not easily done against this Duke team, although they have turned the ball over a lot. Over the last six weeks, they have not. They've had much better control of the football, and when they have turned it over, it hasn't been in crucial situations. First down, Duke at the 19 of North Carolina. Blue Devils already lead 7-0. Draw play, Cuthbert. Cuts outside, a nice stiff arm, and he got to the 15, so he picks up four more. We're going to isolate on Dwight Hollier, the sophomore from Hampton, Virginia, who leads the Carolina defense. Steps up, takes on the block of Chris Brown. Fights his way outside. Eric Gash slows down Cuthbert, and Hollier is there to finish off the play. Second and six for the Blue Devils at the North Carolina 15-yard line. Duke already in front on a Brown to Hines touchdown pass. Brown changes things at the line. Here comes the blitz. Got a man open. It's Hines. Can't quite get there. I think they made the proper adjustment. He just overthrew the All-American Clarkston Hines. They went to a, a double man set up on the two outside receivers and then changed it. And they got Hines one-on-one -on -one with the freshman Rondell Jones. And Brown overshot the mark. And David is more upset at himself than anybody else because he had an open receiver and couldn't get it to him. Hines gets a breather. Keith Ewell comes in at that wide receiver spot. On a third down at six, Duke at the North Carolina 15-yard line. Cuthbert the single setback. Three wideouts. Here comes a blitz. Brown and a penalty marker down. Baskerville will be called for interference. The end zone is incomplete. Covering was Cliff Baskerville. There is a flag down. It's been that kind of year for Mac Brown. Tough call for Cliff Baskerville because Brown throws this ball behind the receiver. And Ewell backing up makes the contact with that Baskerville. You Ewell. see the back judge making the call. Ewell trying to get back, and the contact is made. Almost hits the football with the flag. I mean, he had that baby out in a hurry as they Pass walk the off defense. the penalty. Defense, automatic first down. Interference has been called against the target. So Duke has had things go their way here in the first eight-plus minutes of this football game, and now they're down close. First and, First and goal. First you notice the guard. headband on the Duke mascot there? He's got Go Terps on his headband. Duke would love to see Maryland upset Virginia so the Blue Devils could take sole possession of the title with a win today. Carolina might see some of Cuthbert here. First and goal at the two. Touchdown, Randy Cuthbert and Duke. Excellent. 
Excellent cutback by Randy Cuthbert. Bud Zuber, the tight end, was blocking Jonathan Perry on the play. Perry's got the outside leverage, but when Cuthbert cut back, the block for Zuber was right there, and Cuthbert scores the touchdown for Randy, his 10th touchdown on the ground this year. Garters point after up and good. And with six minutes and 40 seconds to go first quarter, Duke has jumped in front in a hurry. Both their offensive possessions have resulted in touchdowns. The Blue Devil fans happy here at Keenan Stadium with a two-touchdown lead. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lockwoody loves to fly. Are you still here? My son was supposed to meet me. Well, I'll wait with you. That kid is always late. What she loves most are the people she meets. He must have gotten caught in the rain. He was even born late. Irene is what Delta's all about. Irene. Yes? Are you married? Yep. Two kids. Late again, Joey. We love to fly and it shows. <laughs> now, we've owned this business for 12 years now. Rick's the numbers guy in Pete's ideas. He keeps us from killing each other. <laughs> well, somebody's got to. <laughs> and we never really thought much about how much we depended on each other. No. Until what happened to Joe last month. Boy, that really threw us for a loop. Yeah, could've, could've been gone just like that. And then where would we be? Well, I could have had his office. And I could have had his what? parking place. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, but it, of course. Of course. No, you, you, know what? you don't mean that, right? <laughs> we can split up this plan. Guys, right, you just talk. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. Right now, during Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale, generous factory cash is helping people save big bucks that they can take straight to the bank. Hi, I'd like to make a deposit. I love this bank. You never have to wait in line. Right now, you could save big bucks on the Isuzu pickup during our Take It to the Bank sale. Randy Cuthbert, a two-yard touchdown run, puts Duke up by 14. Steve Spurrier on the touchdown play was actually trying to call a timeout on the sidelines. He didn't like the setup. Wanted to call a different play. Steve said, well, that's all right. That's all right. We'll take it. That's what we said at the top of the show. Everything for the last month and a half or so has gone right for Duke. And they're hoping that continues through the next three quarters or so and then on into the bowl season. Randall Felton will take this one on the fly at the 16-yard line with a head of steam. And he got a nice return out to the 34. So about an 18-yard return. Kurt Lagos got down there to make the hit on the special teams. Felton's been a bright spot offensively for North Carolina this year. One of the youngsters who's come in, caught 34 passes to lead North Carolina in receiving. That's a freshman receiving record for the youngster out of Jordan High School in nearby Durham. Decided to come to Chapel Hill rather than stay in town. Got his first collegiate touchdown last week in the loss to South Carolina. First and ten for the Tar Heels. Chucky Burnett rolls right. Look out. Got rid of it. Just over Joey Yawk's outstretched arms. And Chucky Burnett got leveled when he got rid of it. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood on the sidelines. Mike. Guys, you were talking a moment ago about what kind of a year it's been for Carolina. Ramesses, the mascot, the Ram, he has stuck his head under a bush and gone sound to sleep, folks. He says, wake me up when the heels come back. <laughs> oh, stay with us, Hogwood. That's a classic down there. <laughs> Second down and 10 for North Carolina. <laughs> That's the shot of the season. Staples on the toss, cuts back inside, got a couple. It'll be third and eight. Doug Atkinson in on the tackle for Duke. Chucky Burnett, player of the year last year in the state of North Carolina, but he has, as many freshmen will, struggled all season long. The Duke attacking defense has been a significant factor in their six-game winning streak, keyed in part by the return of John Howell, their senior co-captain at inside linebacker. Carolina only 28% on their third down conversions this year. They've got third and eight here. Burnett going deep in the middle, and it's almost picked off by Irwin Sampson. And Felton had a spot back there. But Burnett with the overthrow. The rap against Chucky Burnett this season has been 
overthrowing the receivers, and Randall Felton was certainly open there, but the pass was too tall, and actually Irwin Sampson had the better shot at it. McAllister had his first one for 46 yards, and Roger Boone, the deep man for Duke, lost a couple after that 46-yard punt. McAllister this time an end-over-end -end kick. Boone should have a shot at this one at the 22. And lost the ball. Carolina might have it. Big pile up at the 27 yard line. Oh, they're going to say Duke football. Four yard return by Roger Boone, and the Tar Heels thought they had a big break, but Boone must have gotten back on top of it. Well, you said the charmed existence for Steve Spurrier's Duke Blue Devils. We got an inkling of that in the upset game against Clemson when twice. Billy Ray was intercepted only to have Clemson fumble the ball back to Duke right. on the interception. First and 10 for the Blue Devils at their own 26. Roger Boone in a lot of traffic has the ball pop away from him. You see it laying right there. And fortunately for Duke, Tom Rhodes saw the football before the Carolina player did. So first down Duke at its own 26 up by two touchdowns. Brown. Out in the flat to Clements, he slips and falls and lost a couple yards. In fact, he's going to throw a little hitch out there in the flat and see what Clements can do with it, but he lost his footing. Well, Duke runs a wide receiver screen a little different than anybody else that I've seen, Brad, where they have the twin receivers to one side. They throw that little hitch in the backfield. The receiver cuts back underneath, and the linemen come out in sort of a crossing action, but you got to keep your feet to do that. Lost a couple, so it's second and 12. Three wide receivers set this time for David Brown. To the right side, Hines is wide open. First down, taken out near the 40-yard line. Clarkston Hines with another catch and continues to add to his total. Here's where the Duke offense kills you. They've been beating you with man coverage, so you say, all right, we'll drop back in the zone, second and long. And then they get the ball to Hines in the short area and let his athletic ability get you the first down. He's Marks. averaged over 17 and a half yards a catch in his career. That's unbelievable. Came in three receptions ahead of Ricky Prohl as far as the all-time career receiving list for the Atlantic Coast Conference. Brown back has plenty of time. Throws back. Cuthbert's open in the flat. Cuthbert a first down and then puts his head down and takes Baskerville with him to the 44-yard line. And Cuthbert says, I'll see you later. Boy, he's fun to watch. You know, Clarkston Hines obviously is going to get some votes for Conference Player of the Year, but this kid has been sensational, Jack. And you got to give a lot of credit on this play to Dave Brown. He knew that Cuthbert would be there. Watch this collision. That's an offensive cockroach right there. <laughs> wow. Put about three moves on Baskerville, who didn't bite on any of them, so Cuthbert decided to take the shortest route between two points and went over the top. First down at the 45 of North Carolina. Chris Brown, the first man through. Got close to four yards. Bernard Timmons made the tackle. The tackle by Jonathan Perry. On the previous play in which Randy Cuthbert caught the little swing pass, they had Bud Zuber, the tight end, lined up to the right of David Ray, and he slipped down the field, and you can see Bernard Timmons had let him go, and he was open. Well, this, to a certain extent, our producer, Steve Craddock, thought he was a lot more open than Dave Brown did. <laughs> Second and seven, Brown deep for Ewell. Oh, just between the hands of Keith Ewell. And Dave Brown knows if he would have pulled the string just a shade, Ewell would have had a touchdown. Cliff Baskerville's the guy they've been working on over there. This ball more than 50 yards in the air. Keith Ewell had trouble with it because it was coming right over the top. I got to tell you, that's the hardest ball to catch when it's right over the top. He's looking back into the sun a little bit. That's a tough catch to make, but I tell you what, that was a good ball thrown by that guy, Dave Brown. Duke's the top team in the conference in third down conversions, 52%. They're three for three today. Third and seven here. Cuthbert has another first down for the Blue Devils at the 31 of North Carolina. Bernard Timmons made the tackle. By Bernard Timmons. One of the things that the Carolina defense might try and do, and it's not easily done, you can't allow Randy Cuthbert to come through clean like that on a play-action fake. So you can see right there Alex Samakis, who was dropping off one of the defensive tackles, 
He's got to put a pop on Cuthbert coming through on the play fake. If he's allowed to come out unmolested, Duke's going to kill you. Cuthbert's got three catches today and 47 on the season. Here comes Boone on a delay. And Roger Boone explodes down inside the 20 to the 19 as he went 12 yards in a hurry. Tackle by Del get an injury update on the sideline and go down to Mike Hogwood. Mike? Well, as if the Carolina defense isn't having enough troubles, uh, Lima Dennis Tripp has gone to the sidelines with a shoulder injury. The trainers are working on it. They they uh, hope to get him back in the game, but for right now, he's not able to help the Tar Heels stop Duke on this drive. Tar Heels have been unable to stop Duke so far in this quarter. Brown back on first down. Look at the time David Brown's got. Now he's going to keep it. And does a little hook slide, actually lost about a half yard. Out there defensively was Don Millen, the outside linebacker. That veteran Duke offensive line has allowed 14 sacks on the season. When you consider that Duke has thrown the ball almost 400 times this year, that's pretty good protection. On the verge of breaking a total offense record that they set a year ago, the Duke Blue Devils. Second down and 11. Just outside the Carolina 20. 2.22 to go in the quarter. Brown wants more. To the end zone. Hines almost made a one-handed catch. Not quite the end zone. The one-yard line, but he couldn't hang on to that one. Clarkson Hines, and here's the reason David Brown can throw it so well, huh, Jack? There's the Duke Power Company. Chris Ford will make a number of All-American teams this year at left tackle. Kerry Metz, the veteran center, and Brett Talacro, the senior right guard. They've been four-year or three-year starters for the Duke offensive line, and they know how to protect the quarterback. There's Port, 6'7", 280. Duke, third down, 11. Over the middle, in and out of the hands of Kalana, the tight end. Kalana wanted an interference call against Bernard Timmons and didn't get it. So North Carolina has stopped Duke here and will force a field goal attempt. A little bit of late pressure. Kalana was the release man, and he's looking for a flag, but the officials say not this time, David. Randy Gardner will try to make it 17 to nothing from 37 yards out. It's good. So Duke with three scoring drives, two touchdowns, and Gardner's field goal, and they lead 17 to nothing with 2.03 to go in quarter number one. Hey, hustlers. I got some more party time tips for you from Extra Gold Draft. First, never party with anything less than the full tilt taste of Extra Gold. Hey, this is one tough beer. Another tip, never shoot pool with a guy that brings his own stick. And never ever shoot with a guy that brings his own table. Ask for an extra. Go for the full tilt taste. Nice shot. Thanks. So Duke that time settles for a field goal of 37 yards by Randy Gardner to up their lead to 17 to nothing and Gardner set to kick it away. Eric Blunt and Randall Felton the deep tandem for the Tar Heels. Kick will go to Blunt at the nine yard line. Straight up to the middle to the 30. 
Yeah, and that's where North Carolina's offense will go back to work. Duke's offense has certainly done its job today. There's the last scoring drive. And the average has been roughly three and a half minutes for the three scoring marches. They went 80 yards in 307, 93 yards in 339, and then 54 yards on that last drive in 335, as you see. And without question, the Carolina offense has got to at least move the football and give their defense a break. Duke's had the ball for 10 minutes and 21 seconds in this football game, too. Staples off the right side. Nice pickup out to the 35 by Aaron, Staple, uh, Aaron Staples. His high game of the season was against Wake Forest, and we saw that game, Jackie, at 117. He's a pretty tough little runner. Carolina has gotten 1,000 yards rushing this year out of their trio of tailbacks, Staples, Jordan, and Blunt. But they haven't found one of that threesome to really dominate things. Chucky Burnett facing a second and six. And they keep it on the ground at Staples. Staples got it out across the 38-yard line. Still going to be a third down situation. Close to three yards to go. John Howell, a senior inside linebacker, made the hit. Tackle by Marcus Dyer. You hate to say with one minute to play in the first period that this is a crucial play, but this Carolina offense has got to get a first down here. They've got to give their offense some time to get going and the defense some rest. Third down, a long two. Felton will be the motion man to the bottom of your screen. Staples won't get it. Nice hit by Derek Jackson, the sophomore strong safety who came up from his secondary position. Going to be about a half yard shy, and for Mac Brown, this is a tough situation because you're deep in your own, well, not deep in your own territory, but you're at your 40 yard line. You've gotten only one first down in the ball game thus far, and you're already down 17 to nothing. Normal circumstances would tell you to kick it away here since you're going to be a little bit shy. Looks to be about the length of the football shy. We'll wait and see. There it is. That much on fourth down. I think you hit, when you're one and nine, you've got to go for it. Randall Felton on the previous play was the motion man. So he had Derek Jackson shadowing him, and Jackson was able to step inside and make the tackle. Carolina, as they should do, going forward on fourth down. Benefield hasn't lost yardage all year from the fullback position. Let's see if he gets it. First down, North Carolina. Good call there, partner. Yeah. Michael Benefield cracking behind Kevin Donnelly and Pat Crowley, and that's the place they should have gone, too. They're two best offensive linemen on the left side, and they provide the push. You see number 51 at the bottom of the pile, Crowley, was able to back off that Carolina, or that Duke defensive line and get the first down. They so, might get this play off five seconds to play in the period. There you see Duke has had it offensively to the tune of 17 points with their 14 first downs. And we have played a quarter as North Carolina will have a first down to start the second quarter and teams shoving one another again down there on the field. We played 15. Wait a minute. All right. End of the quarter. We weren't sure. 17 to nothing Duke. And we'll be back. Join with the students in welcoming the Tar Heel team. Let's see which... Right now, during Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale, generous factory cash is helping people save big bucks that they can take straight to the bank. Hi, I'd like to make a deposit. I love this bank. You never have to wait in line. Right now, you can save big bucks on the trooper during Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale. I can't wait till I retire. You know why? I'm going to Africa. There's this one small area there where the lions sleep in the trees. You know why? To get away from this tiny ant. Gets in their fur, drives them wild. So they sleep in the trees. When I retire, I really want to see that. Then they've got these gazelles. Leap 30 feet at a time. You know why? Lions get hungry. Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Excitement. Drama. Beaver. Fans. A showdown in December. 
The ACC Big East Challenge, coming to Greensboro December 5th and 6th. Wake, State, Duke, and Clemson play Big East teams in double headers each night. One ticket covers both games. Hurry, tickets are selling fast at the Coliseum box office and all Ticketron outlets. The ACC Big East Challenge. There's so many fun-minded, budget-minded people are jumping into the sporty new Geo Metro Import. At 58 miles per gallon highway, it's the highest mileage in America and one of the lowest prices, starting at just $59.95, plus $400 cash back all this month at selected Carolina Chevrolet Geo dealers. No matter what, the place to be is in a Geo. This half of ACC football is brought to you in part by the Carolina Chevy dealers. Brad Nessler, Jack Corrigan, and Mike Hogwood at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where the Tar Heels on the short end, 17 to nothing. And Duke has rolled up 192 yards in total offense in the first quarter. North Carolina has 30. But they do have a first down, the Tar Heels, at their own 42-yard line. Felton in motion. Eric Blunt. Blunt to the 49. Picked up seven. Erwin Sampson made the stop. Duke has gone with Rodney Dickerson, really a defensive back and outside linebacker. It's given them good speed, but there are times when a good block can really take care of them. And that time, the freshman, Randall Felton, with an excellent block at the point of attack, gave Blunt the space to get good yardage. Blunt got seven at second and three, just inside the midfield stripe. And Benefield, the fullback for the first down to the 44. As we said before his first down run, he's the only back on North Carolina's roster that hasn't lost yardage on any of his carries. He came in to this game with 212 yards and a team-high five touchdowns. He's a north-south runner, obviously, as you've seen. With the quick strike capability of the Duke offense, sometimes when you're the opponent, you feel like you've got to score in a hurry, and you get away from doing what you can do well. And Carolina's got to run the ball some. On first down, Blunt cuts outside and goes down to about the 41-yard line where Wyatt Smith, the corner, made the stop. Let's head back down to the sideline of Mike Hogwood. Mike. Brad, a lot of interesting events go on with this great rivalry between Duke and Carolina. Bill Tucker from Duke is with Kappa Sigma Fraternity. Tell us what you've been doing today. Well, this morning, myself and my brothers from UNC and Duke University, we got up around 8 this morning and started off at Duke University Wally Wade, and we ran the game ball over here to Chapel Hill to raise money for Association for Retired Citizens. How much you raised? Uh, this year we raised, with our sponsor, Coca-Cola, over $5,000, and that's still going up. All right, congratulations, Bill Tucker from Duke. Second and seven, and the ball picked off on the far side by Wyatt Smith. Burnett didn't get enough on it, didn't throw it quick enough, and Duke takes over. Wyatt Smith with his fifth interception of the season. They're asking Chucky Burnett here to throw the ball a long way. Burnett probably would have been better served there, Brad, to roll out a little longer and try and cut down the distance on that sideline route. Instead, it's a turnover. And Duke, even though they are in a negative situation overall on the year in terms of turnovers, they really made it an advantage over the last couple of weeks. First down, Dave Brown on play action. Might want a whole bunch right here. Deep for Jones. Can't quite hang on at the 13-yard line. That was a pretty well-thrown ball. Got a flag on the play as well back at the 35-yard line. I think they have called a holding penalty on Chris Port. Personal foul will go against Duke. Maybe somebody got some hands in someone's face mask. Dave Brown going back to pass, and again, this kid's got a terrific arm. I mean, he threw that a mile. Just got that ball off before he was whacked pretty good by Roy Barker. He threw that ball from the Duke 35 to the Carolina 13-yard line. That's better than 50 yards in the air. He can put it out there. Here's the call from Joe Long. First Duke penalty. Live ball foul. Personal foul against the offense. Still first down. Well, we don't know the nature of it. We just know that Steve Spurrier is going to shake that one off, I guess. And it backs it up to the 21-yard line. 
Brings up first and 25 for the Blue Devils. Cuthbert, tailback in the eye there, both receivers to the right side, including Hines right in the bottom of your screen. Brown wants to throw back to Cuthbert. He's wide open with a convoy in front. Cuthbert battles his way back out to the 35-yard line. Picked up about 14 yards there. And Cuthbert now with another reception. That's four on the season, uh, four on the game, rather. Again, the play action, and very obviously, the Carolina linebackers take very deep drops, so they are most susceptible to the screen pass. Second time, Cuthbert's gotten very good yardage out of a screen. Second out, 14, Brown. Deep in the middle for Hines. First down at the North Carolina 40-yard line. One of the things I like best about Clarkston Hines, he is certainly one of the finest receivers ever in the ACC, but he steps up to that next level because he is not shy about catching the ball in the middle of the field. There have been a lot of fast, sure-handed receivers who don't like to mix it up in traffic. That's never been a problem for Hines. You see his numbers in the NCAA stats. Three straight 1,000-yard receiving years. He hit that plateau early in today's ballgame. Has four catches for 74 yards on the day. And he and Cuthbert are quite a one-two punch. Well, as we said on the last possession, Brad, for Carolina, they have to force some kind of turnover now. Second down, almost five to go for Duke. But they've got a 17 to nothing lead with 11.42 to go first half. The fullback got a couple. Chris Brown, J.R. Bolden made the hit defensively by North Carolina. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Guys, I told you earlier about a brother combination of this game. This uh, Stuart Albright over there, number 64, is from Greensboro. He's the long snapper. His brother is Ethan Albright, the tight end for the Carolina Tar Heels, who's also a long snapper. But right now, Stewart's the guy who's happy over here on the Duke sideline. And their dad was a three-year letter winner on the Duke basketball team. Pretty good genes, I guess, huh? Third down at four. Brown for Hines incomplete. Nice coverage that time by Baskerville. Dave Brown looking over to the sidelines to Steve Spurrier. What they want to do, and Steve it appears is going to punt the football or try a long field goal. Gardner does both duties, so we're not sure yet. Yep, they're going to try a long field goal. That's it. A third string quarterback comes out to hold. And now Duke's going to take a timeout as perhaps they want to discuss on the sidelines about the potential of going for it here rather than try the field goal. 10.59 to go in the half. 17 to nothing, Duke. Coach Spurrier's name really popped up this week in terms of vacancies in the National Football League. He's been rumored to be heading to as many as four different places in the NFL next season. Steve said this week, I haven't talked to anybody. I haven't worried about it. All I want to do is get a piece of that ACC title and we'll let the events take place as they happen from that point. And of course, he tops the Florida Gators list as a possible coach for next year. Kind of likes the lifestyle around Duke, though. A little more laid back than some of the places he's been rumored to be heading. Well, Duke thought it over and decided to go for it here on fourth down. I believe that was their first unsuccessful third down try, second one in the ball game. That's right, because they missed on third down as well when they kicked the field goal. Four out of six on third down right now. And you would have been talking about a 51-yard field goal attempt by Gardner, and that's really out of his range. Would have been close to a Duke record for field goals. Fourth and four. Fourth and four. Both wide receivers there on the left side of the top of your screen. North Carolina may have jumped off sides. Brown throws over the middle, and it's Kalana, the tight end, the first down and more down the sideline. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Well, there's that pick play again, and they run it to perfection, but I got to tell you, that should be a penalty. 
because Clarkston Hines, the guy who does the pick, has to at least give the semblance of wanting to catch the football, and all he is doing is blocking a man. The second time they have run that ball successfully with Kalana to get a first down. At the 12-yard line of North Carolina. Duke with a big lead and the football deep in Tar Heel territory again. Brown to the end zone. Hines, touchdown! His second today, his 37th of a brilliant wide receiver career for the Duke Blue Devils. Well, fortunately for all of us football fans, we'll get to see number 12 perform magic like this for a lot more years. The only problem for Clarkson, he's not going to be able to wear that number in the NFL. That's right. Extra point, up and good. 10 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half. And Duke turns a Wyatt Smith interception into another long touchdown drive, and Clarkston Hines is on the receiving end again. People. I got some more party time tips for you from Extra Gold Draft. First, never party with anything less than a full tilt taste of Extra Gold. This is some serious beer. Another tip, the next time your buddy sets you up with a blind date, try not to look too surprised the first time you see her. Betty, right? I'm Tom. She likes me. Ask for an extra. Go for the full tilt taste. It's just cologne. Investors looking for signs of intelligent life are advised to look closer to home. For effective investment plans and strategies, expertise and service unsurpassed by any other investment firm, and a full range of financial products and services, you need look no further than the leading Southeastern investment firm. Interstate Johnson Lane. Some people think only foreign companies build quality cars. Now, according to an independent survey, an American car company offers you a choice of some of the most trouble-free cars you can own. That American car company is Buick. And the 1990 versions of those American cars are Buick LeSabre, Buick Riviera, and Buick Electra Park Avenue. We believe there's a new symbol for quality on the great American road. Brad Nessler, Jack Corgan, Mike Hogwood at Keenan Stadium where the Tar Heels are down 24 to that high-powered Duke offense. There's the last scoring drive, the fourth scoring drive of the day for Duke. I mean, they can put points up and it doesn't take long. Doesn't take much time at all. And you can see they have now set the single-season scoring mark. 339 points now in the season and almost 40 points a game the last five weeks. They've also broken their own total offense record for a season that they set in 88. Felton on the kickoff return brings it back to the 22-yard line. Nice job on the special teams. Fonda Williams down there, back up safety. Take a look isolated on the senior from Canton, Ohio, Fonda Williams, who picked his way through traffic and made an excellent open field tackle. So we'll see now as North Carolina's offense comes back on the field how much they will change things up. There's the hogs up front, Mets and Port and the rest of the crew. We also had a penalty against Carolina on the kickoff. The distance to the goal, the first hit. Live ball, personal foul doing the run back, just receiving team, first down. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood. Mike. Guys, that penalty, some more emotions flying down here. Uh, Randy Parsons for Carolina I don't know, got into a shoving match with a Duke Blue Devil, and uh, they said that uh, Parsons was the one who initiated it, so a personal foul on Carolina. Emotion at, uh, still running very high down here on the football field. Frustrating year, but here's a good look and run. It's North Carolina will be very close to a first down. Eric Blunt brought it out of the pack. By Wyatt Smith and John Howell. The officials in the Atlantic Coast Conference have certainly been called 
to task by Mac Brown throughout this year as you watch the good run by Eric Blunt. He has been very outspoken in his criticism of the officials and certainly I don't want to say they're leaning against Mac, but they're not going to give him any advantage this afternoon, that's for sure. Got a first down there at the 23. Blunt again. And he breaks free out to the 30-yard line. Seven more on the pickup for Eric Blunt. Erwin Sampson made the tackle. Blunt came in with 333 yards, averaging 4.6 a carry on the season, and he gets seven yards on this one. He was a wide receiver last year for the Tar Heels. He's battled some injury problems, a separated shoulder earlier in the year. Just when it looked like he was getting himself in gear, slowed his progress. He's been geared up today, four rushes, 30 yards. Not bad. Well, they rushed for over 2,100 yards in high school, so he knows what to do out of that spot. Stays in there as the tailback in the eye. Um, second down and short. Got to feel the fullback. Goes straight ahead for what looks like a couple of yards. Tom Corpus on the defensive end made the hit. Corpus, a senior out of Westlake, Ohio. Suburb of the city of Cleveland. Corpus has been able to step in and play very well after Duke lost Preston Anderson, their fine junior defensive end from Norwalk, Connecticut. Anderson hurt several weeks ago. Corpus played well in the ball game last week against NC State. You can see how shy they are of the first down here. Wake Forest and Georgia Tech playing in Atlanta today. And there's what the Yellow Jackets are doing at home in the second quarter. They've got a chance to end up over the 500 mark in the ACC, which would please a lot of Georgia Tech fans. Benefield, the fullback. If Erwin Sampson hadn't held on to that trailing foot, he might have been off to the races. The side story in the ball game down in Atlanta and the one here in Chapel Hill, the battle between Clarkston Hines and Ricky Prohl for the all-time career reception mark in the ACC. You can see right now that Hines has added two more catches to his advantage. He now has a five-catch advantage on Mr. Prohl. Those two, without a doubt, the two premier receivers in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Not to slight anybody else, but those two are head and shoulder pads above the rest. Well, Prohl has never been a first-team All-ACC receiver. I think this he year he'll be this get year, his due. Right? Bill Dooley has said he better be this year. He indeed should be, but when you think of some of the other guys in the league as well, guys like Herman Moore and, and Gary Cooper at Clemson, certainly Prohl will, should get it. Hines will get it. But some good receivers again in the Atlantic Coast Conference becoming the conference of receivers. A couple excellent tight ends at least two, two or three. One's here today, Dave Colada. Another, Bruce McGonigal with... Virginia. I would think one of those two might end up with the all ACC first team honor and the other one is the backup. So North Carolina back in Duke territory. They've been there before but last time Wyatt Smith picked off a pass and spoiled a good drive for Mac Brown's offense. And it was now the only third down and almost three. Excuse me. It was the only pass they threw on the drive and it was picked off. They haven't thrown yet on this drive. Felton is the motion man. Here's a pitch to Blunt. I don't think so. Even with a good spot, Wyatt Smith still stopped Blunt short, I believe. Eric Blunt slicing behind the block of his left tackle, Kevin Donnelly, one of the Donnelly brothers who have played so well here at Carolina. That was a good tackle. That was a situation there where Blunt probably needed to put his head down and get the first down rather than trying to spin for the extra yardage. The spin cost him maybe a foot or so and set up a fourth and one and Carolina will again go for it. Last time they went with Benefield, the fullback. He's the up man in the eye on fourth down and a yard. This time it's a tailback Staples. I don't know. It'll be close. Duke with some nice penetration, but Staples with a head of steam, George Edwards. One of the first then men there to make the hit for the Duke defense, and now it's just going to be a matter of where they spot the ball. Scott Yeomans, the freshman out of Gibsonville, also helping out on the play. He was the guy on the top trying to turn him back.
And it's Duke football. By a matter of inches, Duke takes over. Duke takes over. When things are going well, they just keep going well for Steve Spurrier and Duke, and they lead 24 to nothing. Back after these messages from our local stations. Citrus taste of Mellow Yellow beats Mountain Dew, and that's a fact. Mellow Yellow, there's nothing mellow about it. Nothing mellow about it. The M24 tank, designed, built, and powered by Cadillac, it helped decide the outcome of World War II. Today, thanks to the same type of breakthrough technology, Cadillac outsells all luxury imports in the Southeast. Once again, Cadillac is crushing the opposition. For a test drive, see your Cadillac dealer in the South. To us, nothing is more important than your protection. As independent insurance agents, we're the first line of defense for your home, your car, and your belongings. And we represent Kemper because they share our commitment to you. So count on the cavalry for quality insurance, including our professional local service. It's the protection you deserve. Your Kemper agents to call are Mimosa Insurance Morganton, Watson Insurance in these cities, and Jerry Tuttle Insurance in Charlotte. Six thirty-three to play first half at Keenan Stadium, and the band and the student body staying into it. But Duke has taken command of the football game. Obviously, up twenty-four to nothing, and they've taken over on downs after stopping North Carolina on fourth and short. So back comes the record-breaking Duke offense. First down at its own forty-seven-yard line. Brown off play action, going deep. Corin Dorn's the close, closest man, incomplete. Keith Ewell was down there, the closest Duke receiver. And Brown shaking his head. Apparently that was a sight adjustment route or something. As you see what Duke has done with their total offense. Is that incredible or what? Over 5,000 yards on the season. And we still have two and a half quarters to go in this game. In the last five weeks, they've averaged 40 points a game. They're well on their way again this afternoon. Second and 10. Fakes the toss to Cuthbert. It comes out to Zuber. Is back up tight end. All the way to the 32-yard line. What a great offensive concept that time by the Duke coaches. They go with two tight ends, fake the sweep toss right, and then just release the tight end on the left side. He's all alone because the linebackers were inside. They had man coverage on the wide receivers. Nobody covering Bud Zuber. And you probably saw Torin Doran in the back of that replay, still chasing the receiver. Didn't turn around until Zuber had about half of his 22-yard gain. Cuthbert. Picked up two or three. And Randy Cuthbert will have to start watching his numbers shortly because he came in just 93 yards short of a thousand yard rushing season. What's amazing for Duke, Cuthbert's going to get that thousand yards in basically seven ball games. David Brown has a chance with the bowl game for Duke of surpassing the season total of Billy Ray in four weeks. That's right. Second down and seven for Duke. Brown throws for Hines, overshot him at the 10-yard line. And it'll bring up third down and a long seven. They were able to get a little bit of pressure that time on Dave Brown. He's not been sacked this afternoon, what you would call a legitimate sack. He rolled out one time and decided to run and got stopped a yard shy of the line of scrimmage. Alec Samakis, the junior business major out of Pittsburgh, was the guy putting pressure on Brown. Brown will mix it up, get it around to everybody. It makes a makes for a happy offense, right? Changes things up on a third and seven. And the 
ball tipped and intercepted. Rondell Jones down the far sideline. And North Carolina finally gets a break. Watch the pressure from the left side of your screen. I believe that was one of the cornerbacks on the play. I think that might have been Clarence Carter blitzing on the play. Let's see if we can get a number on this replay. Gash. It was Eric Gash, the outside linebacker, along with Cookie Massey, who was blitzing from the other side to put the pressure on. And Rondell Jones gets his second interception of his young career. Chucky Burnett rolls left, sets, and goes deep for Joey Up. And it's almost picked off by Quentin McCracken. Joey Yawk pleading his case for interference, but when the ball's in the air, under this circumstance, the defensive back has as much a right to the ball as the receiver. And you can see McCracken, he's looking for the ball as well. Might have impeded the progress of Yawk a little bit, but not enough to draw an infraction. Looks like good defense by Joey Yawk to me. Chucky Burnett, one out of seven for 11 yards. And he's been intercepted by Wyatt Smith. Second and 10. North Carolina at its own 34. Under five minutes to play in the half. Carolina trails 24-0. Burnett in trouble. And down he goes. Tom Corpus came in from the backside to get to the freshman quarterback. First sack of the day. And the 20th of the season for the Blue Devils. Third and 11. Well, you make a major step forward to go from high school to being the quarterback in a conference like the Atlantic Coast Conference. And Chucky sometimes has problems making those decisions. And you just don't have that much time. You got to make a choice and go with it. And Carolina's going to call a timeout here with third and long yardage. In the first quarter. Four minutes and 31 seconds to go first half here in Chapel Hill, and it's been all Duke Blue Devils. Second quarter. Even when all of Company B heads for the phone, it's no problem for Gail Godfrey. Delta Airlines, Gail Godfrey. Y'all fly to Lubbock, Texas? Yes, that is confirmed. I got some friends who want to talk to you now. Just hold on a second. Thank you. Cincinnati, Ohio. New York City. Monroe, Louisiana. Albuquerque, New Mexico. San Jose, California. Portland, Oregon. Here, Montana. You're all set. Thank you for calling, Delta. Bye-bye. Hi, Gail. Did you get many calls this afternoon? One. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. See you back. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Buzzface. Matthew, did you lose your razor? I can't get around my Adam's apple. You can't get around half your face. <laughs> you can reach every place on your face with the new Slim Twin razor system. Slim Twin has the slimmest cartridge to shave hard to reach places and a choice of pivot or fixed head shaving. That's pretty good. How do I look? Ugly. <laughs> new Slim Twin reaches every place on every face. From Schick. Isuzu's Take It to the Bank sale. Generous factory cash is helping people save big bucks that they can take straight to the bank. Hi, I'd like to make a deposit. I love this bank. You never have to wait in line. Right now, you can save big bucks on the Isuzu pickup during our Take It to the Bank sale. Duke with a couple of touchdown passes. David Brown to Clarkston Hines. Cuthbert from two yards out. Gardner's field goal, and it's 24 to nothing. Stay tuned to the conclusion of today's game. We'll be selecting a Schick most valuable player from each team. Chucky Burnett hit his first pass and has missed his last seven. He's got a third and 11 to work with here. Has time for the sidelines. Felton can't quite hang on. Broken up by Randy Sally back there defensively. Randy Sally at one time was a starting outside linebacker, Sally? but they moved Rodney Dickerson there. Sally now playing in the strong safety spot. Gets turned around on the inside move by Felton, but the pass from Burnett again just a step too long. So McAllister will have to punt it away again. And Roger Boone back deep for Duke. Callister had two punts blocked last week. 
spiral kick taken by Boone. Hesitates, cuts up field, and across the 40, up near the 43 yard line. Boone returns to be tackled by Clarence. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by JP Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation, and a use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference is prohibited. Interesting situation here for Steve Spurrier. Brad, he has got Dave Brown doing such a good job. Billy Ray is not even dressed this afternoon, so the backup quarterback is Todd Decker. He's never taken a snap from scrimmage for Duke. Want to make sure that Brown stays healthy. First and 10, Blue Devils at their own 43. Dave Brown delivers to Jones. Jones to midfield. And he's got more than 10 yards and another Duke first down at the 46 yard line picked up about a dozen. Duke has thrown enough fly patterns guys just streaking down the field that they have got the Carolina secondary really backing off. So when you run the little crossing routes or the stop up routes on the outside you've got all kinds of cushion between the receiver and the defensive back. And as if this offense wasn't tough enough to stop, when they don't go into a huddle, you can make no adjustments, or very few anyway, as far as personnel. Brown over the middle, intended for Zuberer, incomplete. Hollier was there defensively along with Timmons. Well, he also had Randy Cuthbert there. It was a situation. Cuthbert started to reach up for the ball. said, no, I don't think it's for me. And then the ball was underthrown for Zuberer. And only Dave Brown knows who it was really intended for. Steve Spurrier, last season's ACC Coach of the Year. And he said before this season began when his Blue Devils were rated rather low as uh, not being one of the preseason favorites, he says, well, you guys in the media aren't that smart except when you picked me as Coach of the Year last season. <laughs> Brown to Cuthbert on the run. 35 inside the 30. Cartwheels his way to the 28. Rondell Jones put the hit on him, but Cuthbert with another big gainer pickup of 18 because of the way that the Duke offense spreads you out you put Cuthbert on inside linebackers and he's too quick for most inside linebackers plus he's got the strength he just stepped away from Bernard Timmons see how spread out the Carolina defense is so that when you run the guy underneath right there on the left side of your screen now he's disappeared from the picture there he is again Randy Cuthbert he gets that isolation on the inside linebacker and he gets a first down at the 29 here comes a blitz and Brown got rid of it to Zuber somehow and he picks up four yards to the 25 hey Brown's living right because there was quite a wall of Carolina blue coming at him and he just stepped up through a little almost a shovel pass to Zuber. When you talk to Steve Spurrier we've mentioned Cuthbert and Hines and Brown and Ray and all those people. If we can get one more look at that play again you can see Dave Brown made the nice play. We probably won't have a chance to because they're huddled up again and ready to go but Chris Brown has been a big factor for Duke. We'll elaborate on that in a moment. Second down along six here comes Cuthbert. Got it inside the 25, down near the 23-yard line. On that previous play, Dave Brown was able to make that little dump pass to Zuber because Chris Brown saw the blitz coming, and the fullback, number 33 for Duke, was able to step over, get enough of the blitzing cornerback to give Brown an opportunity to throw the football. Chris Brown has been a real factor, not only in the protection for the Duke quarterbacks, but in terms of leading the way for Randy Cuthbert. David Brown has thrown 32 times, Head completed ball. 20, and here he comes with another, and he completes it to Clarkston Hines. First down, Duke at the 15. That's six catches on the day for Hines. So he's got 187 on the career. 59 this season. First down. For over 1,000 yards. First man to ever do it three straight years in the ACC. He's been fun to watch. That TD is most appropriate on that football, isn't it? <laughs> Steve Spurrier told me that Duke's the only team in the conference to use that particular football. It's a brand that he sort of favored in the USFL, and I don't know if it's a better ball to pass or what, but they know how to throw it. This time, Brown's going to go down. Blitz came in there from Millen, the linebacker, and he got to David Brown. First sack for North Carolina. They came in tied with Duke for second in the conference in quarterback sacks. David Brown almost became the Thanksgiving turkey for Millen and Cookie Massey. Watch the end of this play. Each one has a leg. They're about ready to make a wish here. <laughs> Pass the cranberries. 
So he's be... made a turkey out of the Carolina defense this afternoon. He sure has. Second down and 19 back at the 25. Here comes a blitz again. Got rid of it and overshot Cuthbert. The right play with the blitz coming, but he just didn't have enough time to aim at number 42 very well. Same two guys again, Cookie Massey and Don Millen. Millen getting the chance to play with the ejection early in the ball game of Willie Joe Walker. For a while, they were using the freshman Jonathan Perry, but the junior Millen is now in the ball game, and he and Massey do the same thing they did on second down. And Steve is saying, get the ball away. Well, Steve, you remember from your days going under center. That's not as easily done as a coach thinks it should be. Third down and 19, as it is for Duke. At the Carolina 25. Brown deep on the sideline, and it is inter almost intercepted. Almost picked off by Torin Dorn. Had it in his hands. Better, had actually a better play on the ball than Hines did, but he couldn't hold on. Great coverage by Torin Dorn. As he and Hines go one-on-one, -on -one, Dorn the X tailback. That's good coverage. Turn, look for the ball. Just couldn't quite hang out. Hines did a good job of knocking the ball away from Dorn, or he would have had his fourth interception of the season. And Cookie Massey was all over Dave Brown again on that play. So be Gardner's longest field goal of the year if he hits it. This is from 42 yards away. Kick got its way, and it's good. 42 yards. Duke tacks on three more. They run it to 27 to nothing with 47 seconds left in the first half. And we'll have the kickoff coming up after these words. Hey, hustlers. I got some more party time tips for you from Extra Gold Draft. First, never party with anything less than the full tilt taste of Extra Gold. Hey, this is one tough beer. Another tip. Never shoot pool with a guy that brings his own stick. And never ever shoot with a guy that brings his own table. Ask for an extra. Go for the full tilt taste. Nice shot. Thanks. <laughs> That's my son. You know, he could grow up to be one of the world's great doctors. Yeah, maybe a brain surgeon. <laughs> of course, that'd be years of medical school. Big bucks. Maybe he'll just be a, a famous lawyer. <laughs> and there's law school, more big bucks. Actually, I think he'll make a great politician. He already knows how to get everything he wants. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. No matter who you are, or where you go, you gotta run. Get to a GO. It's the brand new import with the world class look, a low, low price, and the highest gas mileage in America. It's quality, dependability, and style. It's GEO no matter what. Sold at selected Carolina Chevrolet GEO dealers. It's the place for me, it's the place for you. In Carolina, no matter what, the place to be. Twenty-seven to nothing, Duke, and their average scoring drive has only lasted about three minutes and twenty seconds. Steve Spurrier talking with Dave Brunson. You got to get back, get your feet turned, get away from center, and get rid of that football. You're up twenty-seven to nothing, but Coach Spurrier says doesn't mean you can't keep coaching. And Dave Brown, the sophomore from Westfield, New Jersey, has been a good student for Eric Steve Spurrier, as Billy Ray was earlier in the year. There's something right with the system. Not only is that young man and Billy Ray very talented quarterbacks, but you take the expertise of a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback in his own right, Steve Spurrier, plug it into an offensive system that nobody can seemingly stop, and you've got a pretty good combination. 27 to nothing. Duke, and they kick it away. Eric Blunt shades over, and he's going to have to hustle to get to this football, and just did at the 18-yard line. That's a free ball down there after 10 yards. We've got halftime coming up in a few moments. Our man Mike Hogwood will take a look around the league. He'll have our one for the books, our student athlete of the week, and some scores and highlights coming up, scores from uh, other games. And later on, we'll keep track of Terrence Mathis of New Mexico, who came in tied today with Clarkston Hines with 35 career touchdown receptions. Of course, Clarkston's got a two-touchdown jump on Terrence Mathis right now, but Mathis will be playing a little bit later on today. And Hines is far from over, I'm sure, as far as his day's concern. North Carolina working from its own 18-yard line. Chucky Burnett. Deep in the middle. Joey Yawk 
in and out of his hands. Let's see. Incomplete. Yawk had it just momentarily. That was a well-thrown ball by Chucky Burnett. Right on the button to the redshirt freshman, Joey Yawk, who has averaged almost 20 yards a catch this year for the Tar Heels. Open over the middle. He takes a heck of a pop. Good shot there by Irwin Sampson to jar the ball loose. Sampson will hit you a little bit. Led the conference in tackles last year, and he's 10th in tackles coming into today's game. Well, they've got three sophomores and a junior in that secondary, and that secondary has really come on. Sampson, the old man of the group, the junior out of Mount Clair, New Jersey. But they've gotten four interceptions from Wyatt Smith this year, McCracken with one, Jackson with a couple. Second and ten, Burnett airs it near sideline, picked off by the waiting Quentin McCracken. McCracken just backpedaled and waited on that one. And Duke still has a chance for more points before halftime, if you can believe that, with 30 seconds to go in the quarter. 13th interception of the season by the Duke defense. Chucky Burnett way overthrown, intended for his tight end, Ethan Albright. And you had it right on the button, Brad. McCracken was just sitting back there waiting for the ball. They were in their deep zone drop, trying to guard against the home run ball. MVP on the Duke baseball team, he just Playing that one in left field, waiting for that fly to come to him. Screen pass Cuthbert, left side. Swivels across the 50, got almost five yards out of it. Down to 20 seconds to go, and Duke will take the timeout to stop the clock. Steve Spurrier will send it in. Well, he was going to send it in with Chris Brown, but now David Brown, his quarterback, is there with him. Randy Cuthbert, 60 yards, closing in on that 1,000-yard season. As he has 33 more to go, he has one touchdown today. That uh, zero should be a one there. He's got a two-yard scoring run. But he's been something to watch ever since the Clemson game, which we brought to you. And he had 55 yards in that game. Duke pulled the upset, and they have not looked back. Six straight wins. Well, the real key for Duke next year will be to replace those guys up front they come back with most of their skill people they lose Clarkston Hines and Kalana so they need to find a, a new tight end and another wide receiver although Clements and Ewell have played a lot they like uh, Mark Mays he's got some potential but it's on that offensive line that they've got to be certain they have the people to take over of the starters Pete Petro, Petrov, the left guard, and the right tackle, Natowski. Chip Natowski will be back next year. Second and five. Duke with 20 seconds to go with a half, trying to add to their big lead. And wide open is Kalana, the tight end. Run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. And that'll be a first down, a 17-yard pickup, and 13 seconds remain. Well, now they're in a situation where they've got a shot at a long field goal by Gardner and they've got enough time left now that they can throw the deep pass and not worry where it goes they're not with a timeout left and everything else forced to go to the sidelines they can throw it straight up the middle of the field as well if they want to Clarkston Hines has scored on two corner routes on the right side and he's in motion and Brown's in trouble fires far side overshot Kalana who was open on the sideline but North Carolina put enough pressure on David Brown that he threw that one high and away. We're down to six seconds to play. And they're going to have Mr. Gardner try a, well, let's see, probably 48, a 48 huh? yarder where he's got the spot on the ground. He hit from 42 yards out his season long. He did that 41 seconds ago. So Randy Gardner, who's perfect on the day, going to try one here from 48 yards out. Kick is no good. Just to the left on him. And our first half comes to a close. It's been all Steve Spurrier and the Duke Blue Devils through the first two quarters of play. As David Brown, his quarterback, has been hot. Randy Cuthbert has been what he has been for the past month and a half or so. And the Duke defense has kept North Carolina not only from scoring, but they've intercepted Chucky Burnett a couple of times so far in the afternoon. So Duke breaking some offensive records and putting up big numbers through two quarters again here today at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. 27 to nothing. Duke in front. 
And let's go down to the leading coach with Mike Hogwood. Steve Spurrier is down there, Mike. Well, Coach, you put some points on the board here in the first half. Offense looks pretty good. Well, we've got some. Should have had more, I thought. But uh, we, had, we had a chance at a lot of touchdown passes because they're blitzing us a lot. And we're not hitting all of them. But we're hitting, we're hitting a bunch of them. Motion's pretty strong today on both well, sides. Well, yeah, our guys are ready to play. They've been ready to play all year, and I hope we can play just as hard second half. We're going to try to. Okay. Steve Spurrier headed to the locker room now to talk to his Duke Blue Devils. We'll be back with our halftime activities in a moment. We'll take you around the league and look at events one week ago in the ACC. We'll also catch you up on all the scores today. And we'll be back here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill after these words from your local ACC stations. After eight straight years as one of the top 10 cars in the world, is the Honda Accord over the hill? Hardly. This is the all new 1990 Honda Accord. Longer, wider, roomier, with more power, performance, and technology than ever. The 1990 Honda Accord, now occupying even higher ground at your Carolina Honda dealer. Christmas wishes come true when you shop at Brendel's. For holiday parties, try the Daisy Six Quart Chef Putt Plus with removable liner. It cooks, fries, and steams. The Hamilton Beach Continuous Clean Toaster Oven boils, bakes, and toasts up to four slices of bread. Fix holiday treats with the Sunbeam Deluxe 12 Speed 60th Anniversary Edition Mixmaster. Happy holidays from Brendel's. I just feel $80 is a lot to pay for sneakers. Huh? That's what tennis shoes cost these days. Yeah, Dad, you only got some that cost $100. Well, how can one record cost $15? <laughs> it's not a record, Dad. It's a CD. A what? <laughs> Who wants dessert? Now, there's something I can feel good about. I'll get this one, guys. It's feel good time at Western Steer. Feel good about 99 cents kids meals, now through December 31st. Now is the time. Factory Incentive, rock bottom sale prices, and $500 worth of Sears gift certificates from your Carolina Chevrolet Geo dealer make now the time to buy a new Geo. So come on, get a great deal on your favorite new Geo. Plus, get this year's largest factory incentives and $500 worth of Sears gift certificates from your Carolina Chevrolet Geo dealers. Hurry to your Carolina Chevrolet Geo dealer today. In the Carolinas, the place to be is in a Geo. We are at halftime at Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Our score, Duke 27, North Carolina nothing. It has been all Blue Devils so far in the first half. Clarkson hides with a couple of touchdown passes. Randy Gardner with a couple of field goals. And the Duke offense seemingly can do no wrong. And it's been a tough afternoon so far for that young Carolina defense and the young Carolina offense as well. One week ago, we had some big games in the ACC. Our game, Duke Blue Devils beating North Carolina State. And let's take a look at the rest of the games as we take you on a trip around the league in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Around the League, brought to you by Interstate Johnson Lane, the leading Southeastern investment firm. Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Grove Stadium, final home game of the year for the Wake Forest Deacons. They were playing Tulsa. Steve Brown's only catch of the day, a 54-yard touchdown reception from Phillip Barnhill. It's a Deacon touchdown. Barnhill's four touchdowns tied a Wake Forest record. This pass to Ricky Prohl, the second to the senior wing back. 33 yards and another Deacon score. Pearl with two touchdown receptions on the day. Tony Rogers is back in form and running back. 106 yards rushing on the afternoon. Wake Forest offense in high gear. This touchdown pass to Scott Kleiner sewed up the victory. 29-17. Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Starting quarterback for the Tar Heels, Todd Burnett. Out early. The freshman, Chucky Burnett, comes on. Throws a touchdown pass to Joey Yout. And Carolina leads at halftime. But Harold Green brought the Gamecocks back. He scores from 19 yards out. Rushed for 63 yards on the day. This score set up by a controversial interference call on Torin Dorn. And it was followed by an unsportsmanlike conduct flag on Carolina coach Mac Brown. 46 seconds later, South Carolina scores and it's 27 to 13. But Carolina fought back. Randall Felton's touchdown reception from Chucky Burnett got the Tar Heels back in it, but time ran out. The final, 27 to 20. In Charlottesville, Virginia, Virginia Tech ranked third in the nation in defense, but that didn't stop the Virginia Cavaliers. No touchdown this week for Herman Moore, but he led the Cavaliers with four receptions for 96 yards. 
Derwin Griggs, two touchdowns on the ground. But the real offensive star has been the case all season. Sean Moore, the quarterback, 222 yards of total offense and one touchdown. Virginia beats Virginia Tech 32 to 25. Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. The Maryland Terrapins looking for an upset over Penn State. Mike Anderson on the receiving end of this Neil O'Donnell pass. It's a touchdown. O'Donnell over 200 yards passing on the day. Blair Thomas, a great running back for the Penn State Nittany Lions, sets up a score on this play. He had over 125 yards rushing on the afternoon. He's got over 1,000 yards on the season. O'Donnell got Dandy Armas in position to tie the score with 58 seconds left. The kick is good, and the game ends in a tie. Maryland 13, Penn State 13. And the sun is shining off the trombone being played by the Duke Blue Devils as they were, that's a tuba rather, playing, performing for the crowd here at Keenan Stadium today. It's halftime, and our score is 27 to nothing. They've got a lot to play about. We've got happy feet today. Coming up, one for the books. And it's a special one for the books, too. We'll be back in just a moment. Too often, investors become numbers. And when that happens, the numbers don't always add up, especially for the investor. There's an investment firm with the kind of personal service and individual attention, intelligence and expertise that have made it the leading Southeastern investment firm. So if you're starting to feel like a number, here's ours. Interstate Johnson Lane. Four, three, two, one, fire. the difference between the AC Delco parts that go into race cars and the ones that go into your car? There isn't any. If you want to win, run with a winner. Any more that can stand up to this kind of punishment you'd call a great mower. But do it with a mower that's 15 years old. You'd have to call it a snapper. If your old mower can't cut it anymore, use it to cut at least $200 off the cost of a new snapper rider. See your snapper dealer during All-American Trading Days. You know, there's a feature on this BMW that you ought to know about. It's free! You could win it in Golf's license plate jackpot. Golf is one available to give away every week for eight weeks, plus $515 fill-ups of Golf Super. To win, see if your license plate number is on the winner's list posted each week at your station. Who knows? You might have a new BMW on your bumper and not even know it. Play license plate jackpot at Golf. We're at halftime. Keenan Stadium, Duke's leading North Carolina by a score of 27 to nothing. The Carolina marching band getting ready to take the field now. It is, we said it's been all Duke in the first half. They are one of four Atlantic Coast Conference football teams headed to bowl games in the postseason. Duke, Virginia, North Carolina State, and Clemson will all represent the Atlantic Coast Conference in the bowl game. It's been a great year of football for the ACC, and that's the subject of our one for the books feature put together by one of our producers, Ken Neal. Delta, the airline of ACC country, is proud to bring you another ACC football one for the books. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Got the water, baby. You got the water. Got the water.
This has been another ACC One for the Books, brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. And it has been a great season of football. We certainly enjoyed bringing you all these football games this season. Our thanks to Ken Neal for helping us relive some of the memories of a great year. And our congratulations to the four ACC teams who are headed on to bowl games in postseason play. In just a moment, we'll catch you up on all the scores around the country today on our JP scoreboard and introduce you to our student athlete of the week. Stay with us. We'll be back. In Maybe we should just leave it here. We can't leave the car here. We're going to miss our plane. As an aircraft mechanic for Delta, Bob Swift doesn't meet passengers every day. Want to some help? Sure do. It's not exactly a jet engine, but you think you can fix it? Yeah. What time is your flight? Six o'clock. You think we'll make it? Oh, uh, you'll make it. Go ahead and try it. That's fantastic. Thank, Thank you very much. Bob, what have you been doing? Oh, a little road work. Delta, we love to fly. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are, father to son, it's what we've always done, Gillette. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream, together the best a man can get. Excitement, drama, fever, fan, a showdown in December. The ACC Big East Challenge coming to Greensboro December 5th and 6th. Wake, State, Duke, and Clemson play Big East teams in double headers each night. One ticket covers both games. Hurry, tickets are selling fast at the Coliseum box office and all Ticketron outlets. The ACC Big East Challenge. When I was a kid, my father tried to tell me, son, someday you'll understand about responsibilities. Now there's my wife, Laura, our kids, Scott and Christina, this house, of course, two cars, three cats, and the fish. My dad said someday I'd understand. I guess that day is here. After all, who'd feed you guys if I wasn't here? Hey, who are you? Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. Now it's time for the Jefferson Pilot Scoreboard, brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. For insurance and financial services, better call JP. And on our scoreboard today, Georgia Tech, the rambling wreck all over the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. That game in Atlanta, 22 to nothing at halftime. Georgia Tech over the Deacons. North Carolina State in Raleigh this afternoon. In the second quarter, they lead Virginia Tech, 10 nothing. 11th ranked Auburn. Out in front early over Georgia, 17 nothing, And ninth-ranked Tennessee and Ole Miss are tied at 7 in the second quarter. There is a big Atlantic Coast Conference game later on this afternoon. Virginia and Maryland. It is the game for the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship, so to speak. As you saw, the Duke Blue Devil mascot over here has a sign on his head that says, Go Terps. We showed that to you in the first half. Well, they certainly hope for the Terrapins to win today because if Maryland could beat Virginia and Duke goes on to win here over Carolina, then Duke would be the champions of the Atlantic Coast Conference. As you see in the standings, both Virginia and Duke with one loss. If Virginia and Duke both win today, then it is Virginia who will represent the Atlantic Coast Conference in the Citrus Bowl. The Citrus Bowl has said they will take the Atlantic Coast Conference champion. If Virginia loses, Duke wins today, then Duke goes to the Citrus Bowl. More than likely, Duke will be headed to the All-American Bowl. Clemson and NC State, you see there also on our standings. Our score here at halftime is 27 to nothing. It has been all Duke so far in this first half. Great passing from David Brown, great receiving by Clarkson Highs, the same old story. And now it's time to introduce you to our Student Athlete of the Week. The ACC Student Athlete of the Week is presented by Infinity, a new concept in luxury cars. Today's award goes to Lindley Bleckler of NC State. I'm not a very intense person off the field at all. This is Lindsay Brescher's mild-mannered morning routine. She walks quietly to class at North Carolina State and makes A's and B's. But the mild-mannered mornings give way to midday mania. <laughs> And then I step on the field, something happens to me that I really can't explain. And that's, I just guess that uh, I was born with that kind of intensity when I get in a competitive environment. 
You'd expect Lindsay to walk with a limp the way she flies around on the ground. We feel pain watching this, but she feels no pain doing it. Really, if you do it right, it doesn't hurt that much. Uh, the biggest problem I have is getting kicked in the shins. And sometimes the goalkeeper feels pain without suffering any blows. When the opposition sends one by into the net, that's pain. After a goal goes by, you've got to turn around. You've got to act like you're not upset because they know when you're upset, that's when things are going wrong. The tournament time, Lindsay and the Lady Wolfpack got it going. They put a scare into number one North Carolina in the ACC finals. Then they won two NCAA tournament games. They played North Carolina again this morning. Ellen, in that big soccer game today, it was number one ranked North Carolina over NC State, two to nothing. The Carolina Tar Heels will play for the NCAA Women's Soccer Championship tomorrow at one o'clock in Raleigh. The Tar Heels have played in eight straight championship games. Our score is 27 to nothing. Duke leads North Carolina. Brad and Jack are back with halftime stats. We'll get a word with Mac Brown after these words from your local stations. For hundreds of years, the grey suit has been the criterion for gentlemen around the world. At Jack Wood Limited, we know there's no such thing as a boring grey suit. No, indeed. Grey is a very exciting colour. That's where the phrase shades of grey comes from. In fact, grey can be absolutely magical. Grey herringbone, grey plaid, grey pinstripe, grey check, grey flannel, grey. All tailored by South. Yes, gentlemen have always known that nothing has more endless possibilities than grey. Unless, of course, it's navy blue. At your Carolina Ford dealer, we know it's selling the top of the line that counts. But when it comes to price, it's getting to the bottom line that counts. Example, start with this loaded 1990 Ford Mustang, one of the Carolina's top selling cars. First, take off almost $900 in option package savings. You get automatic transmission, AM FM stereo cassette, speed control, and lots more. Next, take off $500 cash back from Ford. Retail price, just $99.24. And that's the bottom line before you get your Carolina Ford dealer's own discount. Thirsty people say the cool citrus taste of Mellow Yellow beats Mountain Dew, and that's a fact. Mellow Yellow, there's nothing mellow about it, nothing mellow about it. Last week, WBTV News was on your side. Charlotte hosted a national conference on schools of choice. Mecklenburg County Sheriff C.W. Kidd put his son in jail, even though he wasn't charged with a crime. We told you that fire officials are concerned about the growing number of fires started by candles. C.J. Underwood explained how small claims court works. And we were live from the South Carolina coast all week for a special report on the short and long-term damage from Hugo. Join us nightly for WBTV News. Back at halftime at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, 27 to nothing. The Duke Blue Devils out in front. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood on the sideline with Mac Brown, whose team's in a big hole here at intermission. Mac, your team's in a big hole. One more half left in this season. What do you tell your players? Here? Well, Mike, the thing we told him is you've got to give Duke credit. They haven't missed on offense. They're a great offensive football team. They've got a good football team. We've got to come out and make something happen. We've got to make a big play on offense, stay on the field offensively, and can you to continue to play hard on defense. But they kicked out a field goal and missed and had an interception the last two times out. That's what we've got to do defensively. Stop them or force them to, to turn the ball over and give it back to us. We've got to play hard this second half. Good luck to you. Thank you, Mike. Mac Brown, head coach of Carolina, still positive after a very frustrating season. Back upstairs. All right, Mike, thank you. Brad Nessler and Jack Corrigan back with you. And uh, you take a look at the statistics, and it puts a picture of 27 to nothing on the scoreboard. Really, Duke's really controlled, Jack. Without question, let's take a look at the Schlitzmalt liquor halftime stats. And a couple of very obvious numbers jump out at you. An advantage of 353 yards to just 88 for the Duke Blue Devils in the first half. They have done it primarily through the air. Dave Brown continues to post incredible numbers. He has 291 yards at halftime as he has led Duke with uh, another great outburst. He has got nearly 1,300 yards now on the season passing and just keeps rolling along just the one turnover on the deflection. So the Duke Blue Devils comfortably in control to say the least with that 27 to nothing advantage. Randy Cuthbert 
with better than 125 yards of total offense. Clarkston Hines right now, six receptions to give him 187 on his career and 37 touchdowns, which is an NCAA record. We'll try and keep you up to date as to Clarkston's situation in that regard. Good news for North Carolina. They get the football first to start the second half as JP Sports exclusive coverage of ACC football brought to you by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company for insurance and financial services. Better call JP by the airline of ACC country Delta. We love to fly and it shows by Schlitz malt liquor. No one does it like the bull by golf oil. Try high octane golf super unleaded the latest gasoline breakthrough from golf by infinity a new concept in luxury cars and by Brendel's a store that wrote the book on low prices. Gardner's got it teed up and North Carolina gets the ball to start the third quarter and it's blunt at the 14 yard line. Eric Blunt across the 25 to about the 26 and that's where North Carolina's offense begins and the North Carolina offense as you saw in the halftime statistics really having trouble getting on track Chucky Burnett has just one completion and David Brown has more than twice as many completions as Burnett has attempts if you're with me on how the passing game has gone today for these two clubs. From the 26 Tar Heels first and 10. Yawk and Felton the wide receivers Felton in motion to the bottom of your screen. Aaron Staples got a couple. Defensively John Howell from his inside linebacker position number 29 by Derek senior captain had a knee injury two days before the season opener and then was out a good portion of the season and since he's come back he's really added stability and leadership to that defensive unit for Duke fifth ball game since coming back he was averaging eight tackles a game since returning for the Blue Devils second down and eight Burnett whips it out complete at about the 32 yard line got it to Felton and that's just the second completion of the day Randall Felton as we mentioned earlier there's the numbers coming in on the game for Randall Felton a freshman receiving mark for North Carolina Eric Blunt had set the record a year ago and now operates out of that tailback spot third down and four North Carolina Felton in motion here comes a blitz the handoff to Staples and he doesn't get there got about two yards and that's it John Howell and George Edwards in on the stop boy Howell is such a sure tackler and that's what you've got to have out of your inside linebacking position a guy who when he is called upon to take on a running back head on is equal to the task and Howell certainly does that plus he gives you that extra dimension of being extremely quick for an inside linebacker McAllister 44 yards a kick set to punt another away to Roger Boone hit this one a mile in the air Boone waits on it and takes at the 29 yard line with 13 minutes four seconds to go in the third quarter Duke's got it back on offense and they hold a 27 nothing advantage 36 yard punt the feeling is calming, comfortable. There's some inner sense of satisfaction. It's like holding a well-made, perfectly balanced tool. The joy is feeling connected to it. That's the idea. That's the sense of it. That's what it feels like to drive one. Infinity. I got married way too young. I mean, it was over in a couple of years. But I went to school, got a good job, made me know I could take care of myself. And now, I want to do something. Make sure my baby girl is taken care of if, heaven forbid, anything should happen to me. Now, there is one good thing about being single again. And he's taking me out to dinner tonight. Mom, be in by tall. Or I'm grounded. <laughs> Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. An automotive designer looks at the shapes of nature, the soft lines, and because he sees things a certain way, those lines suggest an automobile design that is honest and natural, and where the driver is more important than the car itself. 
And what is discovered just watching nature is an ancient Japanese notion of what is beautiful. It's called infinity. Duke with a big lead. They have won the last two and three of the last four between these two clubs. Last year was 35 to 29, and the outcome of that one wasn't determined till late. And right now, unless North Carolina can start to turn things around in the next 28 minutes or so, this one won't be in, Duke, in uh, doubt for the Duke Blue Devils. David Brown, 291 yards and two touchdowns passing in the first half. Lines his offense up at their own 30-yard line. Randy Cuthbert. Cuthbert has a first down across the 40 and out to the 42 yard line. 12 more yards for Cuthbert and now he's just 26 yards shy of a thousand on the season. And I would think that will be one of the objectives here in the second half for the Duke offense particularly for those offensive linemen. They have certainly received a lot of credit for being great pass blockers. I think they'll also like the fact that they'll have a thousand yard rusher in their backfield first time that's happened in a long time at Duke first down just inside the 42 Cuthbert again and he has to struggle this time to pick up a yard Eric Gash in on the stop for North Carolina Gash has been a pretty active linebacker today 6-2 sophomore out of Hendersonville North Carolina there he is Duke again without a huddle lines it up at the 43 yard line. They don't hurry the offense by any means but they keep it right up there close to the line a la the Cincinnati Bengals. Brown out to Kalana the tight end to the 48 and it'll bring up a third down there. Pick up a five. Cookie Massey in on the tackle. Dave Kalana with a chance for a 40 reception season. He's got 35 on the year right now. Four today for Kalana for 60 yards. And close to 500 yards, 495 yards in receptions. Not bad for a tight end. Third down at four. Duke just outside its own 48 yard line. Pitch to Cuthbert and he goes down. Nice penetration by the North Carolina defense. I think Cookie Massey is really the guy that messed that play up a little bit as he came up from his secondary position and kind of submarined in there and then he got help from his friends including Alex Samakis number 55. Now we're going to see a punt for the first time this afternoon by the Duke offense. Randy Gardner to kick. He's been a busy kicker today but it's been kickoffs and field goals. Takes a high snap from center and got a nice punt away. Fair catch by Eric Blunt at about the 19-yard line. 32-yard kick and the fair catch by Blunt who stays in there as the tailback. Gardner averages about 33 yards a punt to show you how effective. Granted, he didn't begin the year as the punter as well, but for Randy Gardner, that is only the 20th punt he has made this year. Shows you what Duke is doing. Either they're scoring or turning the ball over on offense. They're not punting very often. <laughs> If you want to be an All-American punter, don't go to Duke. If you want to be an All-American quarterback or receiver, this might be the spot, I guess. Chucky Burnett on first down. Has plenty of time. Deep in the middle for Felton, and it's broken up by McCracken. Felton had to make an adjustment on that at about the 48 of Duke as he was in the middle of the field and had to kind of slow up for the ball. It was an excellent adjustment by Felton, but good coverage again downfield by Quentin McCracken. Burnett had good protection. You can see Felton trying to jump back into the ball if he could, and all he did was jump into the oncoming Quinton McCracken. McCracken, who has an interception today, an easy one. Second down and 10. Duke at its own 19-yard line with 10.51 to go third quarter, and Duke in front, 27 to nothing. Chucky Burnett. Deep sideline, incomplete, intended for Felton, the closest man. But Rodney Dickerson was actually closer to the ball. Brings up third and ten. Felton was pointing to Dickerson, saying he impeded my progress. But it looked to be a different read by Felton than, well, not, not enough of a nudge to make a difference, although... 
Rodney should know when you're that far downfield, you're really not supposed to get involved with the guy too much. Brings up third and ten in North Carolina, one out of seven on their third down conversions today. Here comes a blitz. Burnett got away from one. Still scrambling and finds his man, Bucky Brooks, for a first down at the 34-yard line. Well, that's the type of athletic play that the Carolina coaches look for out of Chucky Burnett when they recruited him out of Cummings High School in Burlington. Does an excellent job here of staying active, keeping the play alive, and a fine catch by Bucky Brooks. Brooks' second catch today. This one good for 16 yards and a first down out near the 35-yard line. Burnett, the slant. Yawk can't hold on. Eric Irwin Sampson deposits Joey Yawk on the Keenan Stadium turf, and he's still down. When you run the quick slant, the quarterback has got to deliver the ball early. Burnett was late on the delivery, plus the ball was high. The two no-nos as far as a receiver is concerned. He had to reach back for the ball and took a heck of a pop in the small of his back. I was going to say, I guess the first rule of thumb there, deliver it low so if I get hit, I'm not up in the air, huh? Well, that was a buddy pass. You come back to the huddle and go, thanks, buddy. <laughs> Yock didn't make it back to the huddle. He came to the sideline. Staples on a toss sweep on the right side. And he fights his way for about eight yards out to the 43-yard line. Third down and short will be coming up for North Carolina. Nice run by Aaron Staples. Staples had 16 yards on seven carries in the first half, so he really had to earn it. Georgia Tech and Wake Forest playing in Atlanta. And look what the Yellow Jackets are doing. Now Jerry Mays continues to add to his glittering totals as he closes out his Georgia Tech career in the next couple of weeks. And looks to be a first down North Carolina. At the 45-yard line is Benefield, the fullback. You know, we've been talking about the pro potential of Clarkston Hines and Ricky Prohl. Torn Dorn here will certainly get a long look as a defensive back in the NFL. I'm really excited and curious to see how things will turn out for Jerry Mays in the pros. He's not big by pro standards, not big by college standards, but all he's done is be successful. And I don't see that changing when he goes up to the next level. First down at the 45 for North Carolina. Burnett, half roll, and goes deep for Felton in the middle. He held on at the 25. Brilliant catch by Randall Felton, a pickup of 30. Randall Felton from Jordan High School in Durham makes a great grab here, fully extended. Oh, that's just a super catch. That's a great picture of it, too, guys. Wow, what a... What a shot, and Felton says, there you go. Been waiting on that one all day. Freshman out of Durham. He's going to be a good one, already is. But as he gains experience in North Carolina, stabilizes at the quarterback position, he'll put up some pretty good numbers in the next three years. Staples got hit by John McDonald first in the backfield, and then the rest of the Duke defense closes in. Pick up a three, second and seven. Second and seven. Best progress of the afternoon by the Carolina offense as they have gotten it down inside the Duke 25. They started this drive at their own 19-yard line and have moved it down to the just outside the 22. Mac Brown, very personable coach and is well liked in this area, and I think everybody wants to see him do well. It's just been a struggle this year. On second and long, Burnett. Far side, completes it to Felton again, and it's going to be close to a first down. Put his knee down just inside the 15, and that's about where they had to get. Might be the length of the football shy of a first. Randall Felton running the bench, the out route. Gets the body turned, spun his head quickly, and then used the body to shield the ball away from a defender. I think he's going to be just a little bit shy of the first down. Felton with three catches today now has 37 on the year for 495 yards. Yes, and less than a uh, foot to go for the first down. So third down and short. See how much more confident Chucky Burnett is now throwing the football after completing a few passes in a row. He had one streak in there where he was 0 for 7. 
And he's three for four on this drive. I think it was that scramble and then the third down completion to, to Bucky Brooks that really picked him up. He and all of his offensive teammates. We coached Benefield into a first down earlier. I don't know if he got this one, though. That's why you're up in the booth and not down <laughs> on the sidelines with either Mac or Steve Spurrier. It's a lot safer up here. Carolina players saying they got it. It will depend on the spot of the football. And I think he may have lost just he he an lost inch or two. No gain on the play. Fourth down. So Bucky Brooks brings in the play from the bench and Mac Brown, and we'll see what North Carolina does on this fourth down conversion. One for two on fourth downs in this ball game. 13 out of 20 on the season, so they're a pretty good club on fourth down. Big one here. Benefield, no. Duke has stopped North Carolina on downs again. Tom Corpus makes the initial hit, and Duke will take over. Well, that was really the time to run some play action and go wide. It's easy to make that kind of call from up here. But good penetration over the top by the Duke defense. I think that was John Howell who was airborne over the top of the stack and Benefield had no chance whatsoever. So with 652 to go in the third quarter, the Duke defense comes up with another big play. Their offense has certainly done the job today. They lead 27 nothing back after these words from our local stations. I just feel $80 is a lot to pay for sneakers. Well, that's what tennis shoes cost these days. Yeah, Dad, you we got some that cost $100. Well, how can one record cost $15? <laughs> it's not a record, Dad. It's a CD. A what? <laughs> Who wants dessert? Now, there's something I can feel good about. I'll get this one, guys. It's feel good time at Western Steel. Feel good about 99 cents kids meals now through December 31st. I think most people plan for retirement. They plan to educate their kids, pay off the mortgage. But they don't think about missing two years work. Most people don't believe they can lose a lifetime savings because of an illness or some stupid accident. And I thank the Lord every day that I'm not like most people. Nothing moves you. Something cool is coming. That's why. The Cougar XR7. It has speed sensitive steering. And an iLock brakes. But most of all, it has a supercharged 210 horsepower engine. Wow. It's becoming a cat eat dog world out there. See your dealer now for low financing or special savings on 1990 Mercury Cougar XR7. Cogwood back at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill where North Carolina just drove 66 yards and got stopped on fourth and short again by the Duke defense. So back comes the Blue Devils high-powered offense. They keep it on the ground to Cuthbert and Cuthbert got about three. Jonathan Perry out there to make the tackle for North Carolina. Some of the Duke alums are here. Mike Hogwood's with a couple on the sideline, Mike. That's right, Brad. A couple of guys, matter of fact, who last played for Duke in a bowl game. This is T. Mormon, who says he went both ways for Duke on that Cotton Bowl team 29 years ago. You've got to be proud of what these guys are doing. Today. You bet. You bet. They've become believers now. That year you went to a bowl, Carolina beat you on the last game of the season. That had to hurt. Unfortunately, that's true. Right here in this field, they beat us 7-6. to six. All right, we're watching Randy Cuthbert gain a couple of yards for the Blue Devils. This year, this team has uh, really surpassed a lot of expectations, turning it around in the Clemson game. And for the Duke alumni, it has to be a, a good feeling. Well, that is fantastic feeling for us. Cuthbert is the moral and the inspirational leader of this team. That first run against Clemson, where he, four or five people took the tackle, the whole Duke team seemed to say, we're believers. What was, we the, key, can, what was the key to that old team back in uh, the early 60s? We were believers, too. We believe we could do it. All right, there are a lot of believers. We're, we're going to talk to your old roommate, Dwight Bumgarner, oh, in just yeah. a minute. Let's go back up to Jack now for the play. All right, Mike. 1960, the Blue Devils were 7-1 and one and heading for the Cotton Bowl in North Carolina. 1-7 and seven at the time upset them. 7-6. to six. Doesn't look like that's going to happen today. First down at Cuthbert. 
gets the carry off the left side and Cuthbert explodes out for 11 yards to the 40 yard line and Randy Cuthbert slowly but surely approaching that thousand yard season. Let's head back down to Mike. All right. Here's another player from that 61 team in the Cotton Bowl. D Dwight uh, Bumgarner. Dwight you were a tackle both ways on that team. Now I understand that the year before you played at North Carolina beat uh, Duke 50 to nothing. Was that the case? That's true. They didn't let you live that one down for a long time. Well, you're mentioning it now, so it's been a, <laughs> since 1959-60, so it's been a long time. We haven't lived it down yet. Maybe we can double today's halftime score when we get the monkey off our back. Well, you got the ram on your back right there. <laughs> yeah. He's harmless. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'll ask you, what was the key to that team that went to the ball game? I think we just believed in each other. Uh, we didn't have a lot of depth, uh, but we had a lot of guys that really liked each other. We believed in our coaching staff. and. We just played together and we played to win. All right. Both of you guys had, both T. Mormon, Dwight Bumgarner had si uh, sons that played for Duke. They roomed together just like their dads did. And as we see Randy Cuthbert break a couple of tackles and run for a Duke Blue Devil first down. Much to the light of these two guys here. Thanks for being with us. And I know you're going to go enjoy the rest of the game. And uh, maybe we'll see you at the Duke Bowl game. Huh? You bet. <laughs> it's great to be remembered. And thanks for having us. All right. Two guys from the original Duke Bowl game team 29 years ago. And they're proud of this addition. Randy Cuthbert with that run, as you see, joins Steve Jones as the only Duke player to have 1,000 yards in the season. As Jack said earlier, Cuthbert has taken about a half a season to do it. He's got 105 yards on 19 carries today, six straight 100-plus games. Dave Brown off play action. Deep in the middle, Hines at the 25, and Clarkston's down to the 17-yard line. Pickup of about 25 on the play to Clarkston Hines. And Hines and Cuthbert keep adding to records. I said this before. Clarkston Hines, fearless in terms of running in traffic over the middle. He runs that dig route, that crossing route, as well as anybody I've ever seen. He's got the great on top speed that backs off the secondary, and then he finds the creases in the middle. And you can see that Ricky Prohl is not going to make it easy for Clarkston to have that all-time mark in the ACC. Boy, they've been fun to watch this year. Through three years, actually. Brown intended for Jones, who couldn't quite find it back there. Defensively, Thomas Smith was covering. Credit on that play really has to go to Jonathan Perry, the freshman outside linebacker, was putting a lot of pressure on Dave Brown, and Brown had to throw the ball before he wanted to. Brown now over 1,100 yards the last three games. For some quarterbacks, that'd be a pretty good year. Sure would. Remember, he's a sophomore. Second down at the North Carolina 18-yard line. Brown again. Oh, right into the hands of Cookie Massey. Massey down the left far sideline to the 35-yard line. I don't know where Dave Brown was going with that one, but number 20 was the only guy out there. 19-yard return for Cookie Massey. Had Dave Kalana going one way, Dave Brown's pass went the other way, right into the arms of Cookie Massey. See if we can see what happens here. Brown has Kalana crossing, and he just overshot him. And Massey comes up with the interception, his first of the season for the freshman from Rock Hill, South Carolina. We'll see if North Carolina can do anything with it offensively when we come back. There's a difference when you're flying. Where are we going today? We're going to Grandma's house. There's someone who shows how much Let's they go care. Away. I'm not going to go anywhere without you. A smile, a tone of voice, and the willingness to try. When you love to fly, it shows. Official test for lifetime intake valve cleanliness. 
Of course, you don't have to drive a BMW to take advantage of Golf Super. It would be nice. Golf has a new BMW available to give away every week in the Golf Super license plate jackpot. Check your station's weekly winners list for your license plate number. This is our vantage point. That's Brad right. Nessler and Jack Corgan back upstairs. Mike Hogwood down there on the sideline and North Carolina ready to line it up at their own 35 yard line trailing 27 to nothing. But they've got an opportunity now with a cookie Massey interception second interception of Dave Brown today. Steve Spurrier wasn't happy about the last one. Either one for that matter. See what Carolina does with it on offense. Felton, he's been a bright spot in motion to the bottom of your screen. And Blunt loses a yard there. Corpus has really had a big game at defensive end for Duke. Corpus part of that big recruiting class of 1986 for the Duke Blue Devils. They said it was perhaps one of the top 10 recruiting classes in the country that year. And the recruiting coordinator at the time said, gentlemen, you're going to go to a bowl game before you leave Durham. He was right. Sure was. They say the sophomore class that's playing out there right now to the tune of Brown and Cuthbert and company might end up being better. Here comes a blitz on Chucky Burnett. Trying to direct traffic throws. That's almost picked off by Erwin Sampson. Did it on a one hop intended for Bucky Brooks out near the 45 yard line. Wake Forest and Georgia Tech are playing and Jerry Mays three touchdowns on the day now and his name in the record books with as we see North Carolina State's now hit a field goal and taking the lead over Virginia Tech at halftime. Jerry Mays with his name right up there with Robert Lovett and Eddie Lee Ivory not some bad company. And the ACC uh, monkey is definitely off the back of Bobby Ross down there at Tech now. They've got a chance to win seven games. Talk about that in a moment. Chucky Burnett pump fakes, wants to throw a screen, pressured, and throws near one of his linemen, and a flag goes down now because Pat Crowley, his left guard, was the only man out near that football, I think. Well, Eric Blunt was also there, but they're going to call a, a roughing the passer penalty against Scott Yeomans, who was a little bit extra in his pressure on Chucky Burnett as he tried to throw that screen pass. Yeomans, yeah, that's Ooh. a good call. Yeah, that is. Ball was definitely away, and he had enough space to avoid the contact. But you're asking a lot of a defensive lineman to miss taking a shot at a quarterback. <laughs> Roughing a passer against the defense, first down. Well, that's going to move it out near midfield, out to the 49-yard line. Mentioning Georgia Tech, if they beat Boston, if they go on to win in that game against Wake Forest, and they certainly have it well in hand, and then beat Boston College next week, and if they can beat the arch rivals from Athens, the Georgia Bulldogs, they would finish seven and four, and the ACC would have five teams with seven wins or more. And that's quite an accomplishment. Burnett going to go deep for Yacht. Just missed at about the 12 yard line. One more point about Georgia Tech is you mentioned Brad the chance to finish seven and four but with the way their schedule is this year they could be a seven and four team with no bowl appearance because they are playing Boston College next week and then Georgia the following week and really the way the bowl invitations go out anymore you have to make your mark by the second week or the first week in November. You're better off to jump out to about a 5-0 and start and then try to hang on than you are finished strong in this day and age in college football. Too bad it has to be that way. Second and 10, Erwin Sampson. Diving interception. Third time Chucky Burnett's been picked off today. Fourth interception of the season for Sampson. So you've got Wyatt Smith with five. Sampson with four. And two on the year for Quentin McCracken. And all those guys will be back next year for the Blue Devils. And Chucky says, not again. <laughs> Long day for last year's high school player of the year in the state of North Carolina. 11 interceptions on the season five. against Chucky Burnett. Chucky's only five out of 20 a day and has had three picked off. Chris Brown, the fullback, gets good yardage off the left side out near the 45-yard line. Virginia playing later today 
And right now it looks like Virginia will play for a share of the ACC title because Duke's going to have a little piece of it without a doubt. It would seem we've got 17 minutes plus left in this game and it's 27 nothing Duke and they've got the ball with a second and four. Cuthbert cuts outside. Good block and a nice run and Cuthbert into North Carolina territory at the 46 yard line. Didn't mean to jump on you partner but what a block by Chris Brown. I mentioned it earlier and Cuthbert I'm sure would echo it. Watch number 33. What a block he put on uh, number 95 Eric Gass the outside linebacker. First down. Brown just kind of a quiet hero. Cuthbert's a guy that gets the ink as well he should. Look at the numbers today. That's six. just on the ground. He's also caught his, his share of passes as well. And as we mentioned, six straight hundred yard plus rushing days. Brown deep for Hines. He might have another one. Touchdown, Duke. 44 yards. Hines has three today. 38 on the career. Carolina was in an all out blitz and put Hines in single coverage against a walk on freshman Thomas Smith. What a move. What a move. And Brown had enough time to lay it out there. A little bit of the jig at the eight yard line to avoid the last tackle. Look at that. 17 touchdowns this season by Clarkston. More than the Carolina passing game has done the last three years. Hines, nine catches, 162 yards, and three touchdowns, and he keeps adding to his own NCAA record as David Brown's having another big day at quarterback for Duke. They lead 34 0, 156 to go in the third. can feel it in your chest power the sound of it is like a drum yet when you're in the car the sound is silence all you feel is powerful and safe infinity I, 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 I. <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> Hey, Dave, where'd you get that chin? What's wrong with my chin? Where'd you get that nose? It's Dad's. How do you shave under that thing? Now there's a razor as unique as the Thomas face, the new Slim Twin razor system. Slim Twin has the slimmest cartridge to shave hard to reach places and a choice of pivot or fixed head shaving. Dave, I'd give Dad back his nose. <laughs> What's wrong with my nose? <laughs> new Slim Twin reaches every place on every face. From Schick. It's important to Infinity to build fast cars, but it's more important to build perfectly balanced cars. And this harmony of balance comes from thinking about the effective speed on such other luxury attributes as comfort and styling. Infinity cars are primarily driver's cars, and the luxury experience is one that you most enjoy while you're in the car and moving. Infinity. Four to nothing, Duke, as Dave Brown throws another touchdown pass. Under Steve Spurrier, you see that that's almost six miles. <laughs> Keep this up, they'll be able to have the distance between Durham and Chapel Hill through the air. <laughs> Brown with 365 yards and three touchdowns again today. Remember, it was, came in with back to back games with four touchdowns. This one's not over. Here's a kick. Luck from the four. Got an opening. And out to the 40-yard line. Nice run back by Eric Blunt. Keith DuBose may have saved a touchdown, a 36-yard return. When they have kicked the ball deep, Duke has been susceptible to the return. They were going to that sideline kick to slow things up. They go back to the deep one, and Keith DuBose... James DeBose, who used to play for Mr. Spurrier in the USFL, the older brother of Keith. Carolina at its own 41-yard line. Chucky Burnett's got a throw and throws some more. Fires this one intended for Felton. 
Sampson was there covering. Erwin Sampson, who picked off a pass of Chucky Burnett's on the last North Carolina offensive series, and that pass interception by Sampson ended up being a touchdown drive for the Duke offense. The other Burnett, Todd Burnett, was playing very well last week against South Carolina when he got hit and ended up suffering a lacerated kidney. So he's not available today. Chucky Burnett is going all the way. He's in trouble here. Got away from one, won't get away from the rest. Still lose yardage. Loss of about four. Another sack for the Duke defense, their second of the day. Corpus is there along with Ply from that defensive line. We mentioned it last week. Duke actually went to this attack blitz oriented defense in the ball game against Virginia, and it blew up in their face. They gave up points on seven consecutive possessions to Virginia but since that time it has very it has been a very effective weapon for the Duke Blue Devils tough spot here for Chucky Burnett third and 15 had Joey Yawk open momentarily now goes deep for him and it is intercepted by Wyatt Smith his second of the day and back he comes to the 40 to midfield for Wyatt Smith 26 yard return on his second pick of the afternoon Wyatt Smith has taken two of them back for touchdowns this year. He was trying to do it a third time. We've got a flag on the play. He had Yawk open early, but then had to roll. And when he threw again, Smith going back on the ball nicely, picked it off for the sixth time this year. And coming back up the field, Maybe. one of his partners must have hit an illegal block, either a clip or a block below the waist. Still be Duke's ball. Clipping. Doing the run back on the defense. First down. Wyatt Smith, sophomore, who's had a, a big day and an excellent season. Six interceptions on the year now for Wyatt Smith. There he is, number 22. Duke with a 34 to nothing lead in the football at their own 32. Duke has some of their backup people in there now. Their starting quarterback stays in there, though, and has a completion out to midfield. Daryl Clements. We've been speculating about what may happen to Steve Spurrier if he chooses to leave Duke. He's not exactly going to leave the cupboard bare because Dave Brown is a sophomore. Randy Cuthbert is a sophomore. Chris Brown is a sophomore. There'll be some weapons still in the cupboard. And if he leaves behind this offensive system, it'll be fun to watch for years to come for Duke fans. Boone fakes the end around and loses a yard. Nice job by Cecil Gray, the senior out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. One of the mainstays on that defensive line for the Tar Heels. Another penalty marker. Thought we had a marker down. I take that back. As the quarter comes to a close, Duke in command. Blue Devils 34, Tar Heels nothing. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love to fly, he's the and it shows. I can't wait till I retire. You know why? I'm going to Africa. There's this one small area there where the lions sleep in the trees. You know why? 
to get away from this tiny ant. Gets in their fur, drives them wild. So they sleep in the trees. When I retire, I really want to see that. Then they've got these gazelles. Leap 30 feet at a time. You know why? Lions get hungry. Jefferson Pilot, Insurance and Financial Services. Your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealers are introducing their greatest selection of new cars for the 90s. They're Carolina's way to go. Plymouth Sundance. Value and performance in one hot little package. With up to $500 cash back, you'll be on the road for even less. The Chrysler LeBaron Coupe, impressive. And you'll get LeBaron Luxury for even less with up to $1,000 cash back. With all those features and 770 protection, you know where to go for your new car. The combination that's above the rest is Chrysler Plymouth. Carolina's way to go. Nice day here in Chapel Hill. That's about all you can say for the Tar Heels today. It's been a rough one. 34 to nothing. Duke second and 11 in its own 49. Brown back to put it up. Short over the middle to Boone. And Roger Boone gets it to the 46-yard line. Roger Boone, who, speaking of brothers and USFL ties, his brother Greg was a heck of a back, all-purpose back for Spurrier with the Tampa Bay Bandits as well. For those people who might be tuning in now and see the score and wonder why Dave Brown is still in a quarterback, they don't have any other choice. Billy Ray is not able to play, and Todd Decker, the backup, they'd like to keep out so they can redshirt him. So barring any kind of injury to Brown, we're going to see him the entire way. Third down. Brown in a little trouble here, and one hops it out there intended for Zuberer, his backup tight end. Cecil Gray got some nice pressure and helps him up. Alex Samakis, the junior out of Pittsburgh, also with good pressure. Well, when you're up 34 to nothing, you can have a big smile. Updating the ball game in Atlanta. Georgia Tech wow. has dominated the Deacons like the Blue Devils have dominated the Heels here this afternoon. Remember earlier, remember earlier in the season when Georgia Tech was 0 for 3 and you mentioned the giant monkey on Bobby Ross back about not winning in the ACC and since that time they've been one of the better teams not only in the conference but anywhere in the country. And this punt down at the one yard line. 45 yard kick by Gardner. And he really got some help from his special teams friends. In fact, they put it down at about the one foot line. Eric Blunt knows there's no chance for the ball, and Duke was set up perfectly for this one. Good play. Rodney Dickerson made sure he almost overran it, but was able to get the ball controlled before those legs touched down in the end zone. Rodney Dickerson, who might be the smallest starting linebacker in Division 1A. 5'10", 165. Kind of a bandit back, really, back there, I guess, instead of a linebacker, yet that's what he's listed as. And there's the tough numbers for Chucky Burnett. And now he's got to load it from his own end zone. Try to get some room out of there. He will throw. Intercepted! The man we just talked about, Rodney Dickerson. And Chucky Burnett's just tied a mark that he just as soon forget. Five interceptions in a single game. Chucky completed almost 64% of his passes in high school. It has not gone that way this year. Boy, that was great effort by Dickerson. He had it, lost it, and got it back. For Rodney, that is his third interception of the season. They've got 10 interceptions the last two ball games. And on top of everything else, the Duke offense gets to set up shop at the Carolina 12-yard line. Dave Brown to the end zone, and his is intercepted, but a penalty marker down. Walter Jones says he was interfered with. Cookie Massey, the man that made the catch back there. Well, the ball know. went right to Cookie Massey because somebody just leveled Keith Jones. It is pass interference on the Carolina defense. So Walter Jones, who was running across the middle, we'll get another look here. You'll catch it on the end right here. Oh, no, you won't even see it. It's just off our camera view there, and that's why Massey had that clean shot at the ball. I think it was Dwight Howyer who ran over Jones. It was kind of hard to tell. 
take it down to Mike Cogwood on the sideline. Well, Brad, we have a guy who's enjoyed watching this game but certainly wishes he was in there, Billy Ray. It's got to hurt you to be on street clothes uh, and watch him perform like this. Oh, well, you know, today was a, it was a beautiful day to play football, but you know, Coach Flurry always emphasizes that you know, most of us are just one of 90 guys. So, um, you know, it's a little bit frustrating not having an opportunity to play, but, you know, Davis came in. He's played exceptionally well. Our whole offensive units play well today, and it's good for our seniors to go out like this. All right, let's go back upstairs. All right, Billy Ray, who put up those big numbers before he was injured, and now his replacement, Dave Brown, is 28 out of 46, 389 yards and three touchdowns today, and Duke's about a foot away from the North Carolina end zone again, leading 34 to nothing. Here's Roger Boone, touchdown. Roger Boone walks in for his fourth rushing score of the season. And even though Roger has been relegated to the sidelines by the emergence of Randy Cuthbert, it was still a good senior season for the young man out of Lake Braddock, Virginia. He'll finish the regular season with over 500 yards rushing and better than 200 yards in receptions. Was that Kalana that hit the extra point? The tight end knocks it through. It is 41 to nothing with 13.08 to go. This has to do with the fit and the finish of things. Small details. A simple elegance that is both warm and friendly. Every detail is crafted to work together to create a feeling, a spirit, a tranquility. Q45 luxury sedan and the M30 sports coupe from Infinity. gems, exquisite pearls, tantalizing gold. When you have something special to say, say it with Brendel's. Say something special. Honey, it's perfect. Then say it with love. From Brendel's. You know what comfort is? Comfort is something familiar. A person says, I feel comfortable here. He means things are as he expects them to be, as he remembers them. Familiar patterns. Natural materials, pleasant aromas, colors, sounds. These are all elements of comfort, as they are all elements of the Q45 luxury sedan from Infinity. There's Dave Kalana, and we're going to take a look at that big left foot of Dave's. What's the sterling effort here? He was a punter and place kicker at High Point Central High School. And so he wanted to show that he could still do it now as a senior at Duke. They're having some fun. Why not? They've got the big lead. Belton takes the kick off at the 14. Randall cuts outside with some room. And out to the 46-yard line. Nice run back. 36 yards for Belton. On a dreary day in terms of football production, number nine has been a bright spot. Limping a little bit after that kick. Well, when Mike Hogwood on the sidelines talked with some old Duke alums, they mentioned, or Mike actually brought it up, the 50 to nothing blanking of Duke 30 years ago. Looks like they're trying to return to favor today. It's back to Eric Blunt. Eric Blunt gets it out to the 49-yard line, and let's go down to the sidelines to Mike Cogwood. Mike? Interesting story about Dave Kalana kicking that extra point. They were just messing around in practice. He says, hey, I used to do this and try it a couple in practice. And Steve Spurrier said, hey, if you want a shot at it, go in there and take it. He said, shoot, yeah. And he went out there and made the extra point. He said, one of the highlights of his year, kicking that extra point today. Kalana has had a big season at tight end for Duke. North Carolina picked up three, second and seven at their own 49-yard line. Eric Blunt spins inside the 45. Looks like he's got a first down at the 44-yard line. We talked earlier in the telecast about guys with a bright NFL future. 
next season and the years to come. We would be most remiss if we didn't include number 51, the left guard for North Carolina. Pat Crowley, four straight years as a starter for Carolina, trying to become the second lineman ever to be all ACC three years in a row, like Virginia's Jim Dombrowski. That's a given, I think. Yep. Eric Blunt. Ten more to the 34 yard line. Dickerson and Wyatt Smith brought him down. Eric Blunt not giving up by any means. He's got 56 yards on 10 carries today. You saw the JP Sports on top. Steve Spurrier loves seeing our cameras. He's got a <laughs> terrific record when JP is on hand to bring us, to bring a Duke telecast to you folks. It all started for him with the Clemson upset. He's loved seeing us ever since. Bucky Brooks in motion. Aaron Staples cuts outside a yard or so. John Howell came up along with Rodney Dickerson to make the tackle and also George Edwards off the bottom of the pile. Chucky Burnett just a freshman and really has learned the hard way this year. Tennessee a little bit of danger of losing that one Ole Miss by four. Tennessee speculated as one of the Cotton Bowl teams this year. Second down and nine, North Carolina. Burnett wanted to go deep on the left side, came back across the middle, incomplete pass. As he got it, complete to Mike Fawkerson, his fullback, who really got popped and couldn't hang on to it. Fulkerson, a redshirt freshman, takes a heck of a pop. Burnett steps up well to get out of the pressure. Throws a little dart to Falkerson and boom, Irwin Sampson. No, it is foul. That makes more sense on that kind of hit. Chucky Burnett now five out of 24. He's completed as many to the Duke defense, I'm afraid to say, as he has to his own receivers. Another third down conversion situation on second. Uh, make it third and nine. Burnett goes deep for Yawk. And Joey makes the catch. At the four-yard line, he held on to that one, took a big shot, but it is first and goal, North Carolina. 29 Joey yards. The redshirt freshman, son of Ray Yawk, who has been a professional coach for many years, running a straight post route, fully extended, took a good hit, hung on to make the catch. Good grab. And first and goal at the four for North Carolina. Hasn't caught many this year, but when he has, they've been for big yardage. Eric Blunt, the tailback in the eye. Two tight ends set. Benefield got a couple. And you know Carolina wants to get the ball in the end zone. Duke trying to hang on. They have not had a shutout in 11 seasons. Goes all the way back to 78. East Carolina tried to pull a shocker. That's early in that game. 19th ranked Panthers down by a touchdown. Pirates have been a pretty good football team this year. They they play a tough schedule, Bowling. but they have been competitive. Bowling. Going bowling. Duke Blue Devils on their way, trying to prevent a North Carolina touchdown, and they do on that play. Doug Atkinson again came in low. Ryan Bollinger, who was trying to lead Staples on the play, lost his footing. And that enabled the Duke defense to keep Staples out of the end zone. So it's third and goal at the two. Carolina fans just itching for something to cheer about today. Down 41 to nothing with nine minutes to play. Staples now, the tailback behind Benefield. Felton in motion. Staples, no. It was George Edwards who made the first hit in the backfield, and now it's fourth and goal from about a yard away. Staples coming to the sideline. Looked like he took a pretty good pop. Fourth and a long yard. The Duke defense so maligned after being buried by the Virginia offense has gotten a little better each week. 
They want the shutout. They've got to do it here. North Carolina, one out of three on their fourth down conversion. Chucky Burnett didn't like the looks of things, and he calls a timeout. There was only three seconds on the huddle clock. They had to call the timeout there. 8-18 to play. We'll be back in a moment. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. Where the race is run, you're the champion. Gillette, the best. The Gillette Atra Plus system and Gillette Foamy Shave Cream together, the best a man can get. Investors looking for signs of intelligent life are advised to look closer to home. For effective investment plans and strategies, expertise and service unsurpassed by any other investment firm, and a full range of financial products and services, you need look no further than the leading Southeastern investment firm. Interstate Johnson Lane. in command. Just over eight minutes to go. Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. I'm Brad Nestler back at Keenan Stadium, Chapel Hill, as the Tar Heels try to get it in the Duke end zone. The Duke defense looking for a shutout. Fourth and goal from the one. Comes a blitz. Burnett doesn't even get rid of the ball on a handoff. And Duke has covered it at the five-yard line. Randy Sally. John Howell with the big play again. And I also think Derek Jackson was in there, but it was John Howell. As Randy Sally falls on it. Shutout still intact for the Duke defense, as Jack said. They've been picked on this year, and they still rank seventh in the conference, but they sure don't play like that sometimes since they've gone to that Attack defense. Statistically, maybe their total defense hasn't improved numbers-wise so much, but they're sticking some people out there now. Brown from his own end. As Andy Anderson, junior tight end, was the intended target. Going to see a lot of backup people the rest of the way now for Duke. Randy. Actually, uh, excuse me, Brad, talking about that Duke defense, actually, since the Virginia game, the yardage they have given up and the points they have given up, for the most part, have taken place after they've got the game under control. All right. Like Army and Wake Forest, even NC State, for that matter. Brown to Clements across the middle. First down out at the 25, and now Duke's got some room to go back to the ground game if they so choose. In Dave Brown's first start against Wake Forest, he had 444 yards. Last week, he had 374 yards against NC State. As we see that Nebraska leads Oklahoma in the first quarter, and Mr. Brown has 419 yards in today's ball game. There you see New Mexico and Fresno State. Terrence Mathis with 35 career touchdowns going into that game, tied with Clarkston Hines. But if you just joined us, Hines has three more today, and I would say that New Mexico's offense is really going to have to be in gear for Mathis to catch Hines. Randy Jordan. All the way out to the, Randy Jones, excuse me, all the way out to the 41-yard line. Speaking of Mr. Clarkston Hines, it's time for our option play of the game brought to you by Option Great Coverage for Men, the advanced way to get rid of the gray. And touchdown grab for Clarkston Hines, his third of the afternoon, put a great one out of move against Thomas Smith, the freshman, 38th of his career. Be a long time before they find a guy better than Mr. Hines, who grew up right here in Chapel Hill. 
Here's the end around Keith Yule looking for somewhere to go and does find an opening. Cuts it into the middle of the field. First down and all the way down to the North Carolina 42. Flags are down at midfield. I thought that was going to be about an eight yard loss and it ends up being a big game. Well there were a couple of almost clips and finally I think they called one. They did indeed at the 49 yard line of Duke. I want to talk about stepping your way through traffic. Keith Yule had to do an awful lot there. Look at Brown throw a block. Yeah, nice Brown did throw a block. And there I think was the clip is called on Walter Jones as he hit Cliff Baskerville from behind. Walter didn't think so. Clarkston Hines, who joins Mark Zeno, who played with Tulane back in the mid-80s as the only wide receiver with three straight 1,000-yard seasons. Going bowling. And at least to share the ACC title in their grasp. Orlando, somewhere. Somewhere we're going bowling. His mother, Jackie, is an elementary school teacher, and she moved the family to Jacksonville, Florida. At the time, he moved from Chapel Hill. Clarkson Hines says, hey, man, basketball was my sport. But in Florida, College football is sort of happy he did. As again, Randy Jones picks up a big chunk of yardage down to the North Carolina 42. Clarkston had the great comedy. He said, in Florida, there are three major sports. High school football, college football, and pro football. <laughs> well, that's it, where he matured as a football player, then came back here to Duke and has put up tremendous career numbers. Hey, yo, I forgot to tell you about the ring. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the ring. ACC championship Let's ring. Go. They'll be ordering them soon, I'm sure. Roger Boone. Here's a little flea flicker as Brown goes across the middle to Jones. And Jones gets it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. 23-yard pickup. Some people might be saying, boy, Dukes is really running it up here. But fact is, they've still got their starting quarterback in there because they don't have anybody else. And I think there's a little bit to that point we brought up before, Brad, about that 50 to nothing shellacking. Even though it was 30 years ago, memories are long in athletics. Don't you know Mike Krzyzewski's sitting there right now going, oh, no. Yes, that's right. <laughs> don't do this to me, Steve. <laughs> I'm going in! At the 19-yard line of first down, penalty markers down. You might have heard in the background some exuberant backup player for Duke knowing he's going to get a chance to play, yelling out, I'm going in. Andy Dunn. We got the ring. They got nothing. Well, the Duke players are having fun. That is one of the great things about winning a conference championship, to get that championship ring. I know I had that pleasure when I played college football. You still right wear it. on my finger. That's right. Well, Duke, not having been to a bowl game in 61, last ACC title was 62. Been a long wait. Comes the double pass. Gets rid of it. And it's intercepted. No. Almost intercepted. Dwight Hoyer got back there as Clemens tried to throw the double pass. It's incomplete. Well, we've had the reverse, the throwback pass, now the double pass. Statue of Liberty hasn't been used yet. The fumble ruski hasn't been used yet. <laughs> Not much else, though. Our Sheck most valuable players today. Clarkston Hines of Duke. Look at the numbers. 162 yards, three touchdowns, and Randall Felton. Maybe he'll become the Clarkston Hines of the future. Who knows? The freshman's had over 100 all-purpose yards. As part of the Schick Most Valuable Player Award scholarship program, Schick will donate $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. As Walter Jones gets it to the 11, we'll remind you the new Schick Slim Twin Razor System reaches every place on every face. David Brown has now surpassed his earlier career best of 444 that he did against Wake Forest. He is now right up around 450 yards. Four, oh, beyond that, I stand corrected. Thank you, Tony. 478 yards. Tony Bridgman threw about three pencils today. Freddie Kiger did the same thing last week. You start keeping stats for Duke, you're in for a long afternoon. Brown on a blitz. Almost.
Wells got it to his tight end. And the North Carolina defense still coming with some steam. Jonathan Perry came in and let Brown have it when he got rid of the football. Andy Anderson, the junior out of Yardley, Pennsylvania, was the intended target, and I guess he is the heir apparent to that tight end spot because both Kalana and Bud Zuber, the backup, are seniors. Gardner in to kick now. This will be a 30-yard field goal attempt. Make it a 29-yard field goal attempt by Randy Gardner. Kick is up, and it's no good. Hooked it to the left with 4.45 to play in the football game. Still, Duke 41, North Carolina nothing. And we'll be back in a moment. I just did something incredible. Five minutes ago, I had gray hair, but now I don't. And this is what did it. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. Option Instant for men is different. With theirs, you have to pour and mix ingredients, but Option's the advanced way. All you need is this. It's so easy. And only five minutes later, your natural looking color's back. Mm, hair feels thicker too. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. the difference between the AC Delco parts that go into race cars and the ones that go into your car? There isn't any. If you want to win, run with a winner. Even in the heat of summer, some people just can't wait for fall, especially when they've got a John Deere 316 tractor with rear bagger. It has a big 16-horsepower engine, tight 26-inch turning radius, and best of all, a roomy six-and-a-half bushel rear bagger. So even when the grass is green, it pays to be on guard, because fall hits some people sooner than others. No interest till March 1990. No payments till April at participating John Deere network dealers. Brad Nessler, Jack Corgan, Mike Hogwood back at Keenan Stadium, 41 to nothing. Duke with one of their most lopsided victories ever over North Carolina is about four minutes and 45 seconds away. This would be the second uh, most lopsided game, I guess. We mentioned the 50-point ball game back in 59. You have to go all the way to 1929, the last time there was a 41-point difference between these two clubs. On the afternoon, the Duke offense with 614 yards of total offense. Came in averaging 486, which is far and away tops in the conference. Number, uh, what was it, sixth in the country, I guess. So they will move up a little bit probably with this performance today. Second down and seven, North Carolina. Here's the toss to Eric Blunt. He's all wrapped up. Defensively, Eric Boak came in to make the stop. Clock winding down under the four-minute mark to go in the game. Duke on their way to at least a tie for the ACC championship. North Carolina will finish the season a disappointing one and ten. And Mac Brown will have to reload for next year. And he's got so many young players that you know that somewhere along the line it's going to pay dividends. But this year has uh, been sort of a nightmare for Mac and his crew. Jockey Burnett. Deep in the middle, Joey Ox got another one and he held on. Got hit by Rodney Dickerson. The ball almost popped loose and Joey kept his concentration. He's got a first down at the 42. Well, when you lose your top running back even before the season begins, you kind of have a feeling it was going to be a tough year. Joey Yock with another tough catch. He paid the price but hung on. It was Fonda Williams who made the hit, not Dickerson. And Joey's going to have a sore back in the morning. Two catches for 47 yards. Both have been across the middle. North Carolina first down at its own 42-yard line as we approach the three-minute mark of this football game. Burnett going deep on the far side. And closest man will be Eric Blunt as far as an offensive player. Actually, Duke had a few people in better defensive position, including Tom Rhodes, a backup linebacker who was backpedaling in coverage. Bucky Brooks went one way, the pass went another. Steve Spurrier, all through his collegiate career as a Heisman Trophy winner at Florida, then a successful 
coaching career with the USFL and now with the Duke Blue Devils and he says I've never worn a conference championship ring and he's kind of looking forward to it too. Eric Blunt got the corner into Duke territory at the 41 yard line. Nice run. Eric Blunt's had a good day. 16 yard pickup. 76 yards on the day for Eric Blunt. Well the great folks who Help us out every week. Executive producer Jimmy Raybird. Steve Craddock, our producer all season long. Dave Burchett, our director. Beverly Rumley, who's producing down in Atlanta today, but normally our associate producer. Ken Neal, he comes up with stuff coaches don't even dream of. We'll check some of the other folks that help bring you the ball game in a moment as Chucky Burnett goes deep and has his pass intercepted. That's six interceptions of Burnett today, and that's a new single game record. Ties a record, I should say. 2.36 to go in the ballgame. Duke's got it back with a big lead. My job was a nice job. I made sure everyone in our company understood our insurance benefits package, especially me. But then they started to make all these new rules and regulations. Do you know what Cobra is? Let me tell you, it's not a reptile. And Section 89? No. I still haven't found anyone to explain that one. Oh, and then there's this thing called Tefra. It's funny. I used to think that was a shampoo. <laughs> Jefferson Pilot Insurance and Financial Services. When you buy a car from your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealers, you're starting a relationship built on trust and service. It's the way to go for quality because their service department is in tune with the newest innovations in technology. So if you're searching for great service on a great selection of quality cars, you'll appreciate straight-talking guys who work hard and care about you. Hey, that's why Chrysler Plymouth is Carolina's way to go. The combination that's above the rest is Chrysler Plymouth, Carolina's way to go. Maryland who made the interception. What a way to finish out the career. Here's a pitch. And cutting back and picking up nine yards again is Randy Jones. Pat O'Reilly, our associate director today. Tony Johnson, Dana Lambert, network coordinators, Terry DeCarlis, our technical director. And the two Daves on our audio keep us sounding good. And the rest of the great crew that we've had all season long and we really kind of look at ourselves as a team that might sound corny but we have a great time together including last night's I guess uh, season finale dinner Jack and I got a couple of gifts at that dinner and we appreciate those as well a pair of socks that I will always treasure you're right? wearing yours today I That's didn't have right. enough guts to put mine on but I will wear them at Christmas time. And, of course, we mentioned our executive producer, Jimmy Rayburn, who's been in the booth with us today to uh, keep us in line. And we want to wish him the best on his Im, uh, impending marriage. No, impending's the word you put before doom, isn't it? <laughs> Freddie Kiger, Tony Britt, Paul Tester, who've helped us with statistics and spotting all season long. And we really have had a good time bringing you ACC football on Jefferson Pilot this year. It's been a quick 11 weeks. Certainly has seemed like it. Wasn't that long ago we were sweating under the lights and now we uh, can't wait to see the lights at the beginning of the game to warm up. And Duke has warmed up to the tune of 41 to nothing. Seven straight victories. They go to eight and three on the year and we'll watch the outcome of the game that will start in less than an hour up in College Park, Maryland when Virginia and Maryland square off. Maryland coming off their tie with Penn State so they're up for it. A Maryland victory would give Duke the ACC title outright of Virginia victory co-champs. 
Jones on the screen pass with a head of steam and a first down out to the 45 yard line that might be the final play or the second to last play of this game and Duke on its way to its first eight win season since 1962 and this is going to be their best conference mark since 1970. Actually, they were five and one coming in, five and two for second place in 1970. They can do no worse than share the crown, and that man's been a big reason why, Steve Spurrier. First down, Duke. And they are going to end the season the way they've been playing the last couple of months with and the they first got the down. Coach with the water of the Gatorade. Steve Spurrier's soaking wet, and they're getting ready to put him up on his shoulders. Well, he deserves the ride. Got a bunch of good kids. They have played exceptional football. A seven-game winning streak as they head into the Holiday Bowl picture. And Steve Spurrier, who was last year's ACC Coach of the Year, who knows, he might have two in a row of those coming up. We'll be back in Chapel Hill after this message from our local ACC stations. Of course you want a safe car for your family. But what is safe? Well, only your airbag and anti-lock brakes on every new model. Standard. That's safe. And the S-Class sedan was rated the safest car in America. That's very safe. Mercedes-Benz. Take a look at one now. I just feel $80 is a lot to pay for sneakers. Well, that's what tennis shoes cost these days. Yeah, Dad, you only got some that cost $100. Well, how can one record cost $15? It's not a record, Dad. It's a CD. A what? <laughs> Who wants dessert? Now, there's something I can feel good about. I'll get this one, guys. It's feel good time at Western Steer. Feel good about 99 cents kids' meals, now through December 31st. Charlotte, get a world of convenience at your fingertips. Cellular telephones from Alltel Mobile. We give you Charlotte and the world at the touch of a button. If you respond to this request, you won't stamp out world hunger or cure a horrible disease, but you will help some people closer to home. By contributing to a special fund, you can help pay heating bills for people who can't. Details are in your November electric bill. Share the warmth with someone close to home. One of the most lopsided scores in Duke, North Carolina matchup history. Duke rolls 41 to nothing. David Brown, 479 yards and three touchdowns today. Clarkston Hines, an All-American, without a doubt, 154 yards and three scoring receptions. And that's going to wrap it up. 41 to nothing. Duke wins it. For Mike Hogwood and Jack Corrigan, Brad Nessler, thanks for joining us on ACC Football. You've been watching JP Sports' exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference Football. Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova, Chris and Martina together in the Charlotte Coliseum for the Belk Levi's Farewell Tour, presented by Coca-Cola and Bojangles. Martina and Chris have combined for 33 Grand Slam titles and have set the standard in women's tennis for more than a dozen years. Get your tickets today at the Charlotte Coliseum, all Ticketron outlets, or charge by phone at 1-800-543-3041. Chris and Martina, December 6th in the Charlotte Coliseum for the Belk Levi's Farewell Tour from Coca-Cola and Bojangles. People say the cool citrus taste of Mellow Yellow beats Mountain Dew, and that's a fact. Mellow Yellow, there's nothing mellow about it, nothing mellow about it. Paul Cameron, on your side with WBTV Sports. Now WBTV joins the regularly scheduled program in progress.